Right. Are we ready? Yep. Cool. Hello and welcome to Heresy Hammer. Um, my name's Lee, and joining me today is Rob. Hello, Rob. Hello. And joining me also is John. Hello, Hello. John. Hello, hello. How are we all today? I'm, at, I'm pretending like we haven't just been talking for the last four Right, that's about to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm as good as if we were when we recorded the tactical four minutes ago. I am good. Cool. I am well. Cool. We, uh, before we get into uh, the show, we're going to go through all our wonderful sponsors. So many now. The so there. many sponsors now. So <laughs> many. Uh, on the left, we have Cryptic Cabin. Uh, go check them out. I think they're dropping a load of 40k stuff. So if you've got any young children that like to play 40k, go check that out. And on the right is uh, the ever wonderful Mr. Meadows. <laughs> uh, Grown so, a lovely beard, Rob. I know. Yeah. I, I say it's, I, I'm, it's getting a bit out of control there, mate. Well, I, I have tried to sort of trim it as well. You know, you kind of went oh, in mate. Bit underneath rather well, than just know. being sort of a warmer. And then I get, you know, I get this thing called what I like to call walrus beard, which is well, walrus tash, which is kind of just sort of sticks up this way. So I kind of trimmed it. So it's a bit <laughs> neater than it usually is, but perhaps not as neat as as a professional would uh, would have. Or John's you, beard. Uh, have you been dying it? Because I talked to you a little while ago, and you I, I haven't. No, I think through. it was the. I think it was the light. It was just particularly underneath was my. Uh, was, light, it? Like that. was it? Was you it? Was it? You see it tomorrow. You're gaming tomorrow. <laughs> aren't you? You're coming around my house to do some gaming. So, oh yeah, oh, lucky. Uh, I know. Yeah, it'll be the first game I played in about ten years. Um, <laughs> so, if you want an army painted in the weekend to fucking top tier standard, uh, check out Rob, and he might be able to do it in about five years' time for you. Um, yeah, that's that sounds about right. I think I've just taken a massive booking today. So um uh, basically looking at winter now. Winter twenty twenty three if you want to book him. Winter twenty twenty three. That's yeah. ambiguous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and also check out his uh YouTube channel. You're doing a load of videos for Army Painter. Yeah, so got so we're doing a collaboration with uh Army Painter um at the moment. So um uh, basically throughout this year. I am doing a infantry and tank tutorial for all of the legions um, using their using their paints. Uh, so you guys might know they've just dropped a whole lot of new speed paints, kind of speed paint 2.0, um, which has kind of updated the series, added more paints to it, but also um, kind of sorted out some reactivation issues that they had with um uh, their kind of original round of uh, speed paints. Um, so it's been, yeah. So it's been there really interesting, kind of using. Um, oh, what, using... Lee? Did did they send you those as a sample <laughs> to try? No, I brought. In which case, then stop promoting them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I, yeah. So keep an eye out for that. I was debating uh, today which um, to kind of what to do next. Um, and it's kind of determined by the transfer that I have. So I was thinking maybe word bearers, but I think um, I want to try their new speed paint yellow out to do some Imperial Fist. So look out for that tutorial either on Instagram for shorts or uh, there are some longer tutorials coming out um, as well. So keep I mean, on. I think you should do word bearers, but... I'm sure um, I found out. I think, got... I think yeah. they should send me some paints. So... <laughs> get in touch. Get in touch with them. Yeah. I'm sure they will. Reach out. And we also have these absolute fucking legends. Uh, oh, Bits really good. Go check them out. Uh, www.bitsmonster.com. I think that is. It's all blocked. Uh, they're on Instagram, bits.monster, and Facebook, bits.monster. Um, free shipping over 25 quid within the UK. I think they're based in Northern Ireland. I think uh, they are. Mm. And if you use the code HeresyHammer, you get 10% off all horus heresy items yeah they've got some really cool stuff on there i've got and some and that, little basket on the go at the moment they're giving us some great prizes for uh the wrath of ah, yes yes they are yeah yeah so, so i think one of the i uh, just one of the prizes that they're providing is a spartan so yeah. there are five oh, kind of trophies up for grabs and one of them <laughs> is a spartan <laughs> assault tank a whole one so, amazing go and check them out like massive thank you from us uh yeah, yeah. so yeah definitely go check them out do it now. Go and buy something because it shows that we are worth investing in as well. Yeah, yeah. Speaking uh, of things that are worth 3D. investing in, don't bother with 3D printing. Just get Gator 3D to do it for you. Exactly, yeah. This is it. Why fuck it up yourself when you can get someone to do it exactly. properly? Yeah. <laughs> do it properly. I agree. 
<laughs> Again, uh, Instagram, gator.3d, and also on Facebook, gator3d printing. Go check him out uh, and get in contact with him if you want anything doing. And also, Beowulf, 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 there you go. Uh, Beowulf miniatures uh, on Google, Instagram, Beowulf miniature printing. Uh, just be careful of the miniature. It is That is how it is spelled on Instagram. It's not mini at chair, it's miniature. Uh, and then on Facebook as well. And again, go check them out. Loads of cool shit if you want to um you know add some cool little bits to your force if you're doing a specific legion you want to add some cool bits then definitely check these people out uh you know adding a simple little thing this is a whole was... bag the whole box of goodies for our attendees at the wrath of active event 3d printed oh, bits powerful. recon marine parts breacher yeah. shields that you sent us to go in the goodie bags for the Wrath of Actium uh, oh, attendees. So again, Not only you can get free stuff by coming to our events and get to hang out with us and yeah. sit at a tiny table so you feel like a massive man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great aerial view. Like, it makes you feel oh like... Oh, my God, man. It is like a proper top down. It's like playing Command and Conquer. Where you yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what we're going for. Oh, I love it. Uh, so check these guys out. Absolute fucking studs supporting us for our events. They're doing some awesome shit. Go check their stuff out. Don't just listen to us. Go and have a look and see what they're doing. Listen to us first. Don't. Yeah, well, yeah, don't listen, listen to, to us first. and then go and check that <laughs> then. out. Then. Uh, so here we are today. We are talking about uh, probably one of the best legions in the heresy, because if it wasn't for these guys, there wouldn't be any heresy. Um, I've heard them referred to as the Taliban of the heresy. Which you is... know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> The uh, the religious fanatics that are the word bearers. Rob's looking yeah. disgusted at me now. You can't. Say that. <laughs> That's because Rob, Rob, I Rob knows that. Well, <laughs> just fucking. Yeah, Rob, Rob knows that we're going to get a fucking strike against that. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, why God. I can deal with oh, that shit. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be going through these today. A little later on. Um, yeah, this is my legion. So uh, we'll probably have loads of rules corrections next. <laughs> next time we do a show. <laughs> Uh, and talking about rules corrections, uh, clearly no one gives a fuck about the um, Salamanders, wasn't it? Salamanders, because we haven't been picked up for anything. In fact, we got some messages saying we're being a bit salty about them, and, and I feel <laughs> yeah, I feel, I, I, feel I, like I, we've been we made the, the best of a bad situation. To be <laughs> I honest. did too. I really yeah. enjoyed our Salamanders episode. I did. So did the four people that watched it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It is. I had a quick look about a week ago, and it is one of our lowest views. Yeah, I mean, thank yeah. fuck we don't run ads on the videos because we <laughs> we wouldn't have any beans in our toast this week. We'd we owe YouTube honest. money, I think. Yeah, I, I think feel so. like we made some pertinent points that it's a good legion. I think that's it was worth it for my fucking yeah. list alone, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. inspired. Yeah. Probably you got to watch uh, the end to get to my list. So, yeah, yeah. We'll just... it's inspired <laughs> a number of people that we know to create a drop pod salamanders list as well, right? We was yeah. at, at, it's tickled uh, Adam's fancy, hasn't it? That one, it uh, certainly has tickled yeah. him right up. Yeah, so. <laughs> If you want to hear some Sorry. proper stuff obviously you can pay a few quid and join the patreon and then there's you know actual proper content over there so yeah none of this bullshit right what's uh, next uh we're Ooh. on to heresy hammer so hashtag Ooh, heresy hammer. Bullshit. Um, i've mixed it up a bit this time i've done all the pictures are um whips so there will be no fully painted finished content this time but i thought it'd be quite cool just to see you know people's processes and ideas people are coming up with or even give someone a little bit of motivation to get something they've built um finished painted so up first we've got esoteric path with a rather sexy no longer available oh. <laughs> blood angels dress i mean a fifth of it a fifth of it is now <laughs> straight straight in there fucking come on <laughs> right in the fucking heart mate you'll be right right in the fields there <laughs> Oh, um, so the thing I like about this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the base is partially cut oh. off the Horus model. Horus base, yeah, correct. Um, and I fucking love it. And 
it's it, Rob, you've done this quite a bit as well, haven't you? Taking bases from other models. Yeah, I am a big, a big, big fan of it. I mean, it makes your uh, dreadnought way easier to see on the battlefield. You know, poking over the top of uh, mm -hmm. crates and, and, and things like that. But um, it, it certainly, it <laughs> certainly looks, uh, certainly looks, looks awesome. Um, I will say that Esoteric Path. Uh, also does um, kind of building commissions now and as well. So converting. Oh my god! So if you want a dreadnought made exactly, like this, it's not that you can get this dreadnought anymore. Then you can go to him. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to head to eBay and spend six hundred pounds on a on a copy of the End of the Death? Four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, all that. Now. <laughs> I'm checking every day for the End of the Death. Like I, I, I failed to get. Hey, did you fail? Yeah, oh, but yeah. I, every single time I've been able to get it, but but not this time. And did, uh, you, did you get one, Lee? Uh, well, if I did, I'd sell it to you for three hundred. <laughs> I would buy it for three hundred quid. <laughs> like, I'm so deep into this now that I can't. Thirty-three percent of us it. managed to get hold of. A... Uh, did you get one? Did you? It's all right, Rob. Oh wait! Oh wait! I'll give. I'm going to give it six weeks, <laughs> and then I'm going to see. Wait till you crack. Do you know what, yeah. mate? Do you know what? When when you've got a spare couple of minutes, you can you can come up with a little trade off. I don't want any money. Okay. What, will you, what will you trade me for it? This, this sounds well. This is starting to sound a bit sexual, actually. I, I was going to say, don't want any money. Time, but... It wouldn't be the uh, first time Rob's done stuff for money. I would. Yeah, exactly. I would. <laughs> would, I would suck. Someone, Rob sucks someone off for a bit. I would suck for the end of the death. Like at this point, like, I, I fucking, I would, uh, like I would do anything to get. But like, I would spend <laughs> hundreds on it. I would suck. Like it does not work. Anyways, anyways, sorry. Right. Before we go too off track, what we do for, for a book. <laughs> uh, up next is uh, Pete King's crap. Move on. Angle, angle bearer. Angel. Angel bearer. Angel bearer. Yeah. Um. So I, I read this is obviously a um. Oh, oh god, fucking! Hell, I'm losing my mind now. I can't even read. Really... What are you doing? I don't know. Uh, Halberd. Is it how? What's the the dude with the flag? Herald. 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 There you go. Um, so this is a word bearer, Herald. Uh, corrupted. Um, it's pretty good. And it was something that Callum was talking about, one of our boyfriends, uh, essentially using the Blade Slaves to act as corrupted characters. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're fucking perfect. I mean, you used one. For Malakas, didn't you, Rob? But I think yeah. So it was awesome it was model. a it was a it was actually a model built by Little Legends for a, a client of mine. So, uh, so okay. Miles had uh, Miles had constructed it, and then the client sent it to me to to paint it. But yeah, they're they're awesome base models, and there's lots of things that you can do with it. This really, mm. I really hope that Pete paints this in Ultramarine's uh, colors, though. Yeah, like, yes. of course he will. Not Ultramarine. yes. Of course he will. Can you imagine him not? This is really yeah. good, by the way. This is. Yeah. Really, I know. Yeah. I was very flippant when we first came onto it, but this is <laughs> excellent. The choice of the marine works really. Yeah, really, really well. well. Yeah, it's great. Great. Looks great. like he's supposed great. to be there. I have yeah, him somewhere actually. That exact dead marine. I'm after fucking. Whip him yeah, out. put him on a put him on a, a spear yeah, up his bum and then make a herald out of him. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. What's up next, Lee? Oh, oh this guy. Imperial. This guy. Um, I don't know if we've ever. I don't think we've shown his whips. We've obviously, obviously shown his stuff before. But I just love the fucking time and commitment to. Uh, uh, does he print the green stuff? They're press it's molded. Press, yeah, press molded, molded. But even so, like, what a fucking ball ache that. Must yeah, I, I wouldn't fucking do this. No way. Oh fuck. Um, but it looks awesome. And if you go and have a look at his uh, his Instagram account, you'll see. Uh, not these finished, but other units he's done in a similar vein, and they look fucking top. I believe yeah. these are going to be Palatine Blades. Yes. So I you so, can yes. guarantee these are going to be ape shit. Absolutely fucking awesome. Just, oh, God. It would take We're going to have to get out to Australia for a little fucking game at some point, aren't we? This is, there's, there's only International one thing. Heresy, yeah, we have yeah. to record an episode out in the fucking in the bush. Oh God! We get Dodging killed the by spiders. The fucking wild animals. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then over here we've got dry brush Dave, and I believe this is a um, uh, sun, sunlight. Mm. Um, cool. And I can't work out whether is this a forty k model? He is. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, so I really like this. I think it's basically just a head swap, really, isn't it? And a shoulder pad yeah. swap. 
kind of yeah. and it's uh, left arm is different. I think start with a, a flag, right? It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I think I think Thousand Suns is one of those legions that really lends themselves to using some of the forty k bits. Yeah. yeah, they do port over really nicely, don't they? I think you have to be careful not go too forty k, but um, uh, like I say, like a, a simple head swap, and this is pretty fucking awesome. Um, and then up next, I saw this miniature a little while, well, a few days ago, and I fucking love it. Uh, Buffle Gum. Um, I think this, if I remember correctly, this is going to be a Imperial Fist Chaplain. Um, okay. And it looks fucking awesome. I don't know where's the helmet from. Does it? Is that? It's a it's a Night Lord's Terror Squad from Raiders. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm guessing the legs are from Tortuga, Tortuga Bay, I think. and then it's the old, well, not the well, yeah, old one of the, the original, Centurion. Um, it was Praetor, weren't it? Uh, artificial armor and Terminator Praetor pack. Yeah. Um, torso. Um, but I think this looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. Really super menacing. Um, I did think it was a Night Lord when I first saw it. I guess this is a trouble of it being unpainted just because of the helmet, but that does work very well as a chaplain um, skull helmet. So it'll be interesting to see this painted up. We'll have to do another one where you see these all painted up. Um, oh, can you imagine the admin involved in that? Jesus Well, Christ. I was saying that, and then I'm like, well, here's a model that's never going to get fucking painted, is it? <laughs> yeah, because it's jacked. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, this is absolutely Fucking unreal. Yeah, yeah. Isn't I think it? You In... did this a little while ago. So this is uh and I can't remember what they're called. So uh it's the um Sons of Horus. The Lupakai. Uh, Lupakai, that's it. Well I'm hopeful um, that he'll he'll realise one day that he's never gonna <laughs> paint them and he can fucking ship them down my way and I can have this <laughs> my sons of Horus. Um it's fucking awesome, isn't it? So this is obviously uh, using the Galv War back, and I think he used a load of the new um, possessed Space Marines, the possessed, yeah. um, which are a thousand. Lodge coins thing. on the chains and the locks are just such lovely little touches. It's just a shame yeah. it will never see paint, isn't it? Well, it will if Jack sends it to me, as we know. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's so saying, I'm, seeing him, I'm seeing him next weekend, so he can maybe bring it with him. if he uh, I think he did a squad. I could be wrong. Oh, but um, better bring him more than bring a big old box. Oh, it is good, isn't it? Like, it's yeah, fun. it's really good, yeah. Really, really good. Very cool. And I think... Oh, no. Have we got one more? We've got one more. Um, Mossberg Minis. This is a uh, librarian, Night Lord librarian, I believe. And I fucking love this model. Um, I'm guessing it's 3D printed legs. Uh, yeah. I just love the uh, the the movement of it. Um, it's just done a fucking awesome job, right? Um, and then over here we have some white scars, and I can't actually read who the guy is. Now, is this is this jet bike is a 3D printer? I'm guessing it's not a plastic one, is it? Uh, I don't honestly know. Uh, no, it's not plastic. No, it's no, got to be three. Too long at the front. It's got to be a print. Well, the the legs are really cool. I love the the stash packs. I think that's really nice. I think um, I like the way that there's quite a lot of movement, uh, kind of depicted on it by um, by like how the uh, how like, the tassels and stuff are sort of moving. Yeah, I'm assuming that in his left hand he's got the kind of the empty sort of copesh kind of or like sort of scimitar guard on the right hand side. I'm assuming that he's got it in his left hand. Yeah. I uh I just like the little um just like the the little um, stash equipment. Packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equipment. it just goes goes to show that they're kind of you know they're away away from their base and they're doing what yeah. they do, reminds me of the old um scout bikes from 40k the ones many years ago. Okay. Like, yeah yeah yeah. The back. yeah they were um, yeah they were very similar. Um so yeah he's done a Fucking awesome job there. So I think that is it. And yes, here we go. Rob, are you back with us yet? Uh, so I can hear you, but I can't. Um, I can't see anything. Um, and <laughs> I, um, I, I'm a bit. So I'll cut this bit out. But I'm a bit concerned that um, you won't be. To... You'll be recording blackness. No, I think it's probably still recording. Uh, oh, okay. Literally the screen. And in order for me to get it 
back, uh, I'd have to switch the computer on and off again, which means... Well, you did say that you were worried something was going to happen. I know. Mm -hmm. There it is. So some would say you fucking jinxed us. Yeah. Yeah. John, have you you recorded the the Patreon video and... um, Okay. I... Shall we do this up until taking a break and then you stop and have a... Would you just want to stop now? No, no, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, I can cut this out because John can just send me this, and then I'll cut this out. So yeah, just ca- carry on, and I'll pretend like I know what you're talking about. All right, so we're doing we're doing dreadnoughts also, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this God. is uh this is a contentious issue. Uh, so essentially, for those that have been living under a rock and don't know, uh, Forge World have given us upgrade kits for our plastic contemptors and taking away our good ones and what i can only imagine are people that are just getting into the heresy were like these are fucking amazing and if you didn't know any better you would think these are fucking amazing but if you knew that actually these are full kits and they've basically just got rid of everything but the torsos and heads then you'd be like (laughs) What the fuck yeah. are you doing, Forge World? Look, what they've basically done is they've ordered you a pizza out <laughs> of the blue, uh, and you think, fucking that's great, thanks very much. And then they've taken the pizza, they've given you a slice and thrown the rest in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that um, in, in taste, taste, some though. of them look better without all the um, kind of accoutrements that go with them, but some okay, of them Okay, so are the Imperial Fist one, fine, okay? I think the White the Stars one looks, uh, looks better without all the stuff on his legs as well. Which one, sorry? The White Scars one. Yeah, okay. Uh, what about the Iron Warriors one? Uh, no, I don't no, think that's bad. better. And I, don't, I uh, certainly don't think the Sons of Forest is better. I think correct. that's Correct, bad, very bad. Yeah. The um, Empress Children one, very mm. bad. And the Dark Angels one, very bad. Oh, no, I think that's better. So in some Do ways, you? I think better. Yeah, but I... Um, I think it's a shame that they just got rid of the option, right? I think it's I think mental. That... I also don't like as well. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption, or oh, I'm going to make an assumption here. Come on. Do, do we think the heads are fixed in place? Do we think the heads come separate? Oh, I hope I... the heads are separate. I'll kick off if they're if they're a monopose. Yeah, I think they've just exactly what they were. They've just not bothered moulding arms, legs, and a torso. To be honest, I think yeah. I think they. <laughs> I mean, depending on price. Yeah, that's that's the big kicker, right? We don't know what they're going to cost. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. if these are like a fiver, then yeah, win. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking as if they are, if they are sub twenty pounds. Yeah, I think that we're in business. If they're nineteen quid. I think we are. We're ready to roll. I think if they're twenty five pounds, I reckon they're going to be some in the region of like twenty six, twenty seven quid. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and I think because of that, they're an absolute rip off. If they're if yeah, that fucking is the travesty. Case. Be I, uh, I just don't really understand it if I'm totally honest. No, nor do I. Don't get it. They... I, of ever, and this, to be fair to them, of everything other than the Space Wolves fucking helmets, this is the first kind of boober I think they've really made since since the new edition with releasing models. You know, we can't complain too hard. They've done some awesome shit, but I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I'd like I don't to play know. devil's advocate here, right? So I'm I'm going to I'm not making excuses for. However, I'm just trying to in my own head since you understand that we we believe right that there's other stuff like heresy is his is more considered a mainstream game now and therefore it's going to have less reliance on both the specialist game studio and also Forge World in itself. Yeah. yeah. So by doing this, they're going to potentially reduce that like production capacities i don't know we know that since the old world's coming out which is going to be kind of a, a bit of a forge rod focus that's going to require both time effort in terms of produ- production but yeah. also like, the number of skews as well we don't know what the cost of resin is doing really but perhaps it's a, perhaps this is a tactical decision to stop them having to put slap more money on the top of the kind of kits like we kind of just don't know i hope i hope it's yeah. not just laziness I'm hopeful it's like, well, we're getting more plastic. There's other stuff coming down the line. I feel like I can kind of kind of see reason for him ahead. Like I don't I don't hate this as a decision. I think it was a bit bit out of left field when we got them. I, I think, think had we not had the, the 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 really nice ones that we've had for you know ten years, we would all be looking at these and going, Fucking hell, this yeah, is yeah. that's I, the I, thing. I, yeah. 
yeah. yeah. I, I think um so there are some that I'm a bit distraught that they're doing this too. So the Blood Angels Dreadnought, I think, is a oh. is a masterpiece. And I think that that's a classic example of one where it is it, it will be less because it's only a torso. Um yeah, but okay. I I also wonder whether um this is there's a longer term strategy here around just giving people also the the central elements of Leviathan Dreadnoughts as well. So will that be the next That thing? was my, going to be my next point, yeah. right? Because also we've only seen, what, half a dozen yeah. Yeah. Leviathans? Or are we going to see any more? Or are they done with that now? Yeah. I think from financially, like, it, it also makes sense. If you want to spruce up a Dreadnought, you mm -hmm. now can't buy just one kit to do that. You now have to buy a plastic kit and a resin upgrade as well. So you, That I do totally understand as well. Yeah. You're, you're going to be spending... spending more money but exactly as you say john i i think these are going to be around 25 pound and i think that lo lots of people will be like okay maybe for like one dread that i'll do but i doubt that i'll upgrade every single one because i'm now having to pay an extraordinary amount of money to to kind of upgrade it yeah i, I think as well like we i think we're also very guilty of thinking you know when we talk about kits like we have to think about games workshop strategy and there's will won't necessarily factor in third party bit sellers and resellers yeah. like yeah. we tend to do yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's where I think that, you know, I can kind of understand where their trade strategy might come from. But yeah. like with everything, look, it would be interesting to know the thought process, but we're probably never, ever going to. So, yeah. no, no. Um, well, we'll see. Like you say, price dependent. It could I think, be. I think in general we will be priced that will dictate whether these are a good or a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, so, up next uh, was this dude, uh, Demon Assassin. Um, any of you guys have any John I know you've got some thoughts on this uh, do you want to uh, give us your thoughts on the model I think it's I don't like it <laughs> um, I think it's not as, as a concept don't hate it not super against it I kind of feel a little bit however like it is I would be fine with just the Loyalist Legions getting out, or, or the the Imperium or whomever uh, just having access to um, Assassins. Right, okay. It feels yeah. to me a little bit like a balancing. I don't know. It does. They're mentioned in the books, aren't they? I know, they? but like, I'm still fine with the, uh, like the trailers okay. and those are having them. I don't oh, yeah. really See, like I... the model. I don't necessarily, I quite like the rules. I think the model is not for me, but the fact of the matter is right. You could just go and do something different. So I'm not that, I think, I think you'll see some really cool third, like third party interpretation, really cool conversions, maybe some three yeah. prints. I think that's where you'll start to come into his own. I, I like, I, as a, uh, and now I pretty much an exclusively traitor player, I won't be picking one of these up. But that's not to say that I wouldn't run one in another format in my games. I uh, I agree with you there. I I quite like the idea of it. In fact, I really like the idea of it. But I'm not entirely sold on this model. But I, I think it totally think... fits with like how you like like your army for, for yeah, instance. which yeah. I think it's an awesome opportunity for doing your own conversions. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, so I think um, the 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 paint mm -hmm. job is a classic every metal paint job. So I think that um, once this gets into the community, I think that we'll start to see kind of paint jobs that we go, oh, well, actually that's quite quite a cool model. Um, I have always been a bit underwhelmed by the rules of the anything from the kind of officio assassinorum. Uh, I think they're quite cool to add flavour to a force, but there, there's none that are particularly game breaking in my opinion. Oh, this what? one, you've not played against a collector's then, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I haven't. Yeah. But um, the this one Apologies, seems like with its uh, <laughs> with its weapon. So it's got an at initiative, uh, strength eight, AP two, brutal two. Um, kind of close combat weapon, right? So, and it's going to be weapon to a five. It's going to have three attacks base. So I think this is going to be pretty, it looks like it's going to be pretty nuts on the table. So I don't know if they've just put all the power, combined power of the, um, uh, all the other assassins in just the one traitor assassin. But it, I mean, just from those rules alone, it looks pretty, pretty nuts. So it'd be interesting to see the kind of, the overall rules. And I assume it's going to be corrupted as well. Um, yeah. so it's going to have all the rules that we'll kind of go through later as we talk about the word bearers but yeah I think I think it's cool to add flavour but I think that um, some cool conversions might come out of it as you say um, and yeah we've just got to wait and see I I'm just curious to see the the PDF rules I just don't think it looks very I don't think it looks very heresy 
No, no I, think, I, I don't think it looks. I think also right. part of it looks, is uh, like it, it feels like it belongs in Necromunda. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I think else. it looks quite dark Eldar like. Um, yeah. yeah. And the fact it's also Sorry. a brown base room as well. Like GW need to understand. Yeah. They just, I think genuinely, they would win over a huge amount of people within the existing heresy community if they just fucking painted the base rooms black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's I agree 100%. There, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really and, easy PR, like a PR win. Paint the, like ev- everybody paints their base rooms black if they're playing heresy. One thing I really don't like as well clear base it. is the uh, the snot thing coming out of its its fist. Yeah, it's real kind of Age of Sigma 40k a bit thing. Of turn off for me that drips and stuff on, and I've never been a huge fan of that. I mean, that's probably just me personally, but I've never been a huge fan of fucking drips and stuff. Um, but I don't think the model's terrible. I just I agree with you. I think it's very Necromunda. This would not be out of place in a Necromunda game. Um, yeah, it's just then, not for me. I like, mm-hmm. and I think, like I said, I think as a, a concept, I'm not like completely sold. And um, I think as a model, I'm I'm really not sold at all. Mm. Just cool. Like, what about these bad lads? One hundred percent sold <laughs> on these. I think oh. I remember right. I, I was when these came out. I remember thinking back. I think I can't remember after which set of heads we were talking about, but we said, "Oh, yes. I just released a set which is called the yeah. bare heads in them." Yeah, we we did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. we, I think we said if they could just combine all the bare heads that they've done so far in just the mm. one set, then that would be awesome. Yeah. But these were a really welcome addition, I think. Yeah, them. I was listening to a um our friends of ours, the Merchant Printings podcast, of a day, and I think it was I can't remember if it was Tom or Giles said that. What's really interesting is they've done some really, really well executed, non kind of Caucasian both sculpts and also paint jobs. Yes, that's and I right. Yeah. Completely, I completely agree. I think these are absolutely. And there's a couple of like slightly weird generic ones where you can kind of see them maybe run out of ideas a little bit. Yeah, but. I mean, there's some fucking absolute winners in yeah, here. Yeah, there's some fucking real, awesome. real winners. This is uh, this is the sort of left field stuff we like. This is yeah, this is, this is good left right. field. This literally came out of nowhere, didn't it? Mm. Um, the, the heads in the plastic kit are also pretty good as well. Yeah, um, and then just yeah, to add yeah. in, uh, are just pretty, pretty like this is just great. Just to add flavor to armies, um, yeah. and the sculpts are brilliant as well. I, I assume that these are, are resin, not not plastic, though, right? I, I presume so. Okay. The bottom, um, I tell you what, so bottom right, that bottom like five, yeah. where you got the two mask guys, the guy with his eye and the scar, the other mask. I mean, those all those five there, I mean, they are all so fucking good. Yeah, that fucking like, scar on his mouth is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Hats off to whoever did these. Yeah. Um, they are brilliantly executed, really well painted. I'm not uh, sure. There's about- a couple of... One or What's two that? haircuts look a bit like they should be sipping yeah. frappuccinos in skin tight <laughs> jeans. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> hair's a relatively easy thing to yeah, yeah, rem- like remodel. <clears throat> yeah, very cool, very Lovely. cool. Yeah, loving these. Uh, oh, and then this is the last one. Um, what do you think about this? Uh, I'm a big fan of these. I like them. Uh, is this what you're expecting? No, I mean it was it was, it's kind of kind of feels obvious. I mean you've got a plastic Sakaran kit and you've got a plastic Cerberus kit, so why not? Yeah. Yeah. It's an easy it's an easy one for them, probably, wasn't it? I don't imagine. Um piece of cake, would, right? Would you be running any of these? Um, I have one. Uh I have had zero desire to run it. I am very Cerberus curious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But this is cool. No, I think this is really, really good. Um, I think that I think that the problem we've got, right, is the fact that, that look at a lot of the releases recently, right? We've already got super heavily congested heavy support slots. Yeah. And I and I know it's become a real cliche sort of saying, where's the infantry? But at the same time, like... Where is the infantry? Where is the infantry? <laughs> yeah, where, where is... Where, where are the options so that, hmm. like... We we can't just keep buying tanks. Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? I I don't really go on Facebook a huge amount anymore, but 
any time right. I did go on there, all I saw was, where's the infantry? Where are the assault arms? And where mm. are the shields? And after a while, I think people kind of have a point. Like, they're with a gate, well, they're with Gator 3D or Fairwolf uh, <laughs> Miniature Printing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it exactly, isn't it? I mean, that is it. And that's what kind of blows my mind about it, is GW, once again, are pushing people towards third parties when you think they'd want to be stopping that. You know what I mean through through releasing those kits, but yeah, I, I, I <clears throat> but also at the same time, I want it to be. I'm, I want to be very clear that I am not like, oh fucking hell, we got no, fucking plastic no, 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 this is fucking awesome. Like yeah, this yeah, is awesome. Yeah. This is absolutely <clears throat> fucking great. Um, I think the, the rules are pretty good. Like, I think if you end up fielding Sakara Inventors, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. I think if you you can take them in squadrons now, which is obviously brilliant, which has been the saving grace, I think, for the Sakara and the fact that you can squadron them up. Yeah. Um, as someone who has had untold successes with two Punishers in the Nine Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I, I think um, I think that yeah. the, for me, it's not about... Um, so I, I don't mind uh, the number of uh, plastic uh, tanks that that we've had because I mm -hmm. think that the the infantry and then the support upgrades that we've got for those in terms of the the shooting weapons kind of covers everything really that that you need. Um, yeah. But um, it's more that I think psychologically I've become a bit desensitized to tanks now. That that is more the yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. Just, when I saw yeah. it, I was just like, oh, another tank. That's cool. Yeah, it was probably expected that this was going to come. Um, and uh, I do wonder psychologically if they flipped it between like you know Praetor and then a, a tank, and then it, but yeah, no, no complaints from me. I think it, we saw it coming, um, and um, it's just nice to have more options in, in yeah. Plastic. But I really, uh, what I really want most of all that would really make me excited is plastic uh turrets for um, for yeah, that, that's what really makes me excited, yeah, cool, cool. cool. I think that is the last one. Yes. So moving on, uh, this is going to be an event I'm running uh, on the 20th of May, Saturday 20th May uh, to Sunday. It's going to be our first, it, it's a bit of a move away from events that we've done under the Her Heresy Hammer uh, banner previously. Uh, Rob's run events using the uh, Maelstrom of War cards that we produce. Uh, so this is going to be a campaign weekend. You will be fighting for control over a planet. Uh, the missions will not be using the Maelstrom of War cards. There'll be uh, kind of tailor-made missions to whatever you're fighting for. A more it, the relaxed... campaign, the camp, like it's true narrative what you've kind of created. I think in my my opinion. So if you are narratively driven, then you need to to get to this event. But I think that from our perspective, that the uh, heresy gaming is a broad church and yeah. that there is room for all kinds of gaming and we don't want to kind of exclude it it's just that lee's taking this one and it's going to be more narrative based i'm considering doing a, a tournament in the next few months as well so yeah it's a broad church right and if you mm, don't, don't, fit, yeah. then don't think, buy a ticket yeah. you know, there's, there's no offense taken it's just <laughs> you're there if you want to be there yeah? Funnily so, enough, I think my event will be somewhere in the Goldilocks space between the two. Perfect. Nice, nice. Um, so there's one. If you don't like Lee, you can come to my event later. Than you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one loyalist ticket left, and I think there's a handful of uh, traitor tickets. So if you do want to get involved, uh, I'll put a link to the event uh in the show notes below, and go check it out. Uh, cool. I think that is it. So we'll take a little break there. And then when we come back, we'll dive headfirst into the mighty word bearers. Awesome. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our little advert. And now into the main segment. We're going to be going balls deep into the word bearers. Uh, have either of you had any experience against word bearers or with word bearers or any kind of no. feelings for word bearers at I, all? I mean, I... other than hatred. <laughs> I quite like them, actually. I think they're quite cool. Oh. And I think that um, 
uh, the the list um, that you did when we were looking at our Allied detachments with your your two Maragall, I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, right. yeah. well, that's quite cool. Um, yeah. So um, I they've definitely like took my fancy, but what what Legion hasn't? I think that um, yeah. the books in particular painted a fantastically kind of victimized, tortured Legion. And yeah. I think what was also great about it was that you could, within uh, First Heretic and Betrayer, it was a Legion that you could empathise with. They were they were bad guys, but you kind of understood where they were coming from. Um, yeah. And the, the, the Emperor had essentially sort of abandoned these guys and particularly had been a bit mean and nasty to, to Lorga and, and they'd leveraged That's all nice. those things. And um, yeah, cool Legion, but it does, it's... It, from the outside not that i know too much about it so this will be quite a cool kind of uh way to get into it it seems like quite a complicated kind of like the rule set seems quite complicated well, you know the fact that you've got corrupted units and um things like that which i haven't really come across before i think so i've on, played sorry. uh so in in the uk we have uh, a gentleman by the name of um kerry love who has is a a long-standing word bearers player probably the longest and he lives kind of quite close to me so we um we've played each other a number of times and okay i must admit they are they are pretty as much as you kind of want to sort of shit on them a little bit <laughs> they are a pretty i quite never quite found myself wanting to do a word bearers army but i have utmost respect for people that do yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think. It, I mean, just look at these two guys here. They look awesome. What's like they? about these two? Yeah, I um, I think they are. They can be quite complicated. Um, which is why I'm now doing Iron Warriors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they, they've also got some incredibly. Some I think some of the the best written characters in yeah. some of the novels. Like I think like you really fucking hate Erebus. Like you really hate him. Like he's just <laughs> such a dickhead. Like he is like, oh, why don't you? If you'd have just fucked off, right? None of this would have happened. It would have all been good. We could have just played just twenty legions versus orcs. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, and then you've got like Ar Argotal, and he's just like he's written so well. And in the That's later so books, in the stuff. siege books, Zardulayak again written like absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. A bit in. Is it Warhawk where he takes off on the like floating palanquin and just like cruises around the walls, extolling the virtues of the word? And yeah, okay, yeah, falling down the ruin storm. And it's just like, oh my god, fucking hell, yeah, what an absolute dick kicker! Like, I, uh, I, I found with them because I, I started reading a lot of the a lot of the books when I started collecting word bearers. And the thing I found really interesting with a lot of the books is, is you can read books and they're really portrayed as just a bunch of little pansies that cry because daddy didn't lo love them enough. But then you can read other bits and it actually kind of, there's a bit um, in the Lorgar Primark book right at the end where he's basically, um, I think it's called Phaeron, it's like, it's like an internal monologue. Oh, he can fuck off. But then he, because everyone's always saying, you know, like, oh, Lorca's such a bitch, he's such a wimp. Uh, like, how was he so easily swayed by two of his um, two of his guys? He's meant to be a Primarch. And there's a bit at the end of the book where Corfairon has this, like, realisation that actually Lorca hasn't been played at all. He's been fucking playing everyone else. He planned all this shit from the start. He just wanted to look like the victim because he'd already planned all this shit. And it was just like, my mind was like it was fuck it's a really good bit um what what is it that attracted you to the word bearers in, in the first as, as a long-term word bearers player what attracted honestly you to the uh the color scheme <laughs> okay fine <laughs> literally the color scheme i i was one of these people that that hated the legion i was like wow wow they blew up a city no one fucking cares and then when i actually started reading into it when i kind of was like you know what, i'd give them a go and started reading some of the fluff. I was like, actually, you know, these these are a lot more in depth than than if if you if you just read certain books, they do come across as wow wow religious fanatics. But when you actually start reading into it, and just the ways that Lorgar swayed them, because their thing is they are basically fanatics. Like the Legion thing is they are fanatics, and when they were loyal, they were fanatics to the Emperor. And then Lorgar kind of slowly screwed the nut. You know, he slowly put these ideas into people's heads. 
And over, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, the Legion slowly goes from being fanatic about one thing to being fanatic about another. And it, and it, it it's it's kind of how religion works in the real world. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, a lot of Christianity stuff has throwbacks to paganism because the easiest way to get people to convert to another thing is uh, is to have things that they understand already. So you're just changing one idea with another. So actually, I think they're a really in-depth legion. And then when you look into their rules, I think they're probably one of the most, if not the most, um, complete legions. They've got so many units, so many HQ options uh, and, and good options as well. And especially now that, I mean, we'll go into the rules in a bit, but now that like Erebus and Corfairon, some of the older models have got updated rules, they're actually really usable because... End of first edition, no one would ever run Corfairon or, or Erebus because they were just a bit shit. Their rules were were dated and and they just didn't really they weren't that great. Um whereas now I think I think they're actually I think some of the rules are really fucking fluffy as well. They're good, but fluffy. Um <clears throat> but yeah, I, I love them. I, I've kind of moved away from them now for a bit, just to have a break, but I do want to go back. I think I'll probably paint them slightly differently. One of the things with the way I painted them is it works well on larger models. Obviously, me being me, I started with Dreadnoughts and Terminators, but the, my paint scheme doesn't really go over to infantry very well. Um, so I think I'll probably paint them differently, which is why I want Rob to do one of his fucking word bearer painting videos. Oh, <laughs> right. oh, I've really yeah. seen like a really dark red. That's... that's yeah. It, oh. I, Again, it's one of those legions that you see lots of different colours, but yeah, you you did paint one, didn't you, on an ultramarine base? Yeah, yeah, and that looked fucking brilliant to me. That was literally the sort of colour that I would I would be looking to do. Um, well, maybe I'll start yeah. one tomorrow before you get here, and then uh, we'll, we can go from there. Because I've got things. I've got word bearers transfers as well. I'm just doing legions at the moment. Though. I've got word transfers for. So okay, let me yeah. let me see. If I'm going to dabble with that tomorrow before you arrive. Right, there's me. Not enough enough. We'll uh we'll get into the rules. So uh the word bearer's main rule, uh true believers. A model with this special rule may never have its leadership characteristic modified below a value of six. Furthermore, if one or more models with this special rule are part of a combat that results in a draw, then a side that includes one or more models at the end of the fight subphase with this special rule is counted as having won the combat by one point. If both sides include models with this special rule, then the combat remains a draw. Interesting. That's quite so, they're quite good. Below can't go below six is great, and mm -hmm. um, uh, a draw counts as a win. That's that's pretty terrific. That this this was one of those rules that when they were first kind of drip fed out before the rules actually dropped, everyone was like, "Oh my god, word bearers are so shit." No. But it's it's really not like leadership so you, six. Yeah, is you don't need to worry about like, like um, the, you know the compounding issues of. Um, sh shell shock plus fear plus night no. you know, yeah. that's, that's the, the, the thing, thing I would say is six is still fairly easy to yeah. fail yeah. yeah um but the 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 drawn combat by one is when it happens it's such a sweet spot because you're just like good. Oh, yeah. cool. and then you're like oh actually no, we didn't. <laughs> fuck you <laughs> yeah it's brilliant yeah, it's uh brilliant. and then we've got the arms of cultures uh, unique war gear, and then priests of forgotten gods. They're special uh, characters, and they've got uh, a praetor can take burning law. And disciples of Lorgar is the uh, warlord special the role. Trace. So we'll get into them in a minute. Um, <laughs> John, do you want to do us a favor and read the reaction? Yeah, is it too much for you? <laughs> yeah, a bit, a bit too much. Yeah. Uh, glorious martyrdom. This advantage reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase. When an enemy unit declares a shooting attack, targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control with the word bearer special rule. Once this reaction has been declared, a single model in the reacting unit with the uh, word bearer special rule is selected by the reacting unit's controlling player. That model is removed as a casualty immediately without any to hit or to wound rolls being made by the attacking units and with no arm saves or damage mitigation rolls made. This ends the shooting attack with no further rolls or tests being made. If any of the weapons in the attacking unit would normally inflict further hits, such as deflagrate or other effects due to hits or unsaved wounds, such as blind or concussive, 
then these additional hits or effects are ignored and have no effect. Any attacks made with weapons with the Ordnance or Destroyer type or the Blast or Template special rules ignore the effect of this reaction and resolve as normal. Pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Really? Good. So you basically like, I'll give you one. In an Ian style, I'll give you one guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, you can have one. Uh, yeah, you can have yeah. one, mate. I mean, you one. It's it's fucking awesome. When you think, I don't know, Rob's Imperial Fist dudes with the... Um, assault cannons. Yeah, the assault cannons throwing out 15,000 shots into your attack squad and you're like, yeah, you can have one dude and then I'm just going to punch you in the face next turn and we probably draw, <laughs> but then I'm going to win anyway, so fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah great. Really cool. I, I like this because it's a good rule. It's not over the top, but also it's really fluffy. You can just imagine one dude mm. being like, witness me, and getting gunned down like a dog. And then everyone else. I might like, convert a model. Like, you have to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just stick him so in like, the front. Like, and... Blazes. Yeah. And, like, you have bullet holes in it or something. Levitating three feet off the Yeah, ground. that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's getting chewed to pieces. Yeah. Um, cool. Right, and then we've got the uh, Word Bearer Warlord traits. Um, Rob, do you want to read the first one? Yeah, I noticed that there's no loyalist, uh, loyalist only, which is uh, which is interesting. But um, I were they that. not purged? They were uh, purged for they... hundreds of years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so traitor only, enslaved by darkness. So uh, first thing to notice is that may only be selected by a model with the Traitor Allegiance and corrupted unit subtype. So I assume to do that, you've got to buy Burning Law or, or something like that, have you? Well, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, so there's a there's a tax on this Warlord trait to go, kind of yeah. go on with yeah. it as well. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, it modifies your strength and toughness by a value determined by the current game term. Plus one, in games term one, two, and three. No modifiers on four and five. And minus one on games turn to six up on six uh, or seven. When targeted by any weapon or special rule that targets the demon unit type, this warlord is counted as though it had that unit type. In addition, uh, you get an additional movement reaction as well, as long as he hasn't been moved as a casualty. So he's pretty fucking boss turn one, two, and three, uh, but then he just becomes normal four and five and you hope that the game has ended by turn six i guess is the kind of yeah <laughs> yeah where where yeah. it goes so here's um let me just get this right so um if he had just like a standard paragon blade he would be strengths it would his weapon would be strength six wouldn't it because it's plus one uh plus one strength so that's yeah that's pretty good and toughness the fact that he can't be instant death by strength eight is he's basically he's, he's He's almost better than battle hardened, isn't he? I mean, that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I is. mean, this is this is essentially the demon the demon subtype rules. Um, yeah. Okay. I think it's good, but I think it depends how you're using him. If you're wanting him to get into combat, it's not going to be until turn two in most yeah. games, and then yeah. you've only got a couple of turns before he's back to being yeah. a normal marine. And then if it goes out too long. Yeah. You know, the minus one can be tough if you don't want to lose your warlord. Um, this, um, I, think... I know I know we haven't come to it, Lee, but um, this does seem one that could pair quite nicely with Last of the Serrated Sun because it's so uh, based on an altered sort of assault. So it, it gets you up there nice and quick, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a few things that we'll come on to that it can, uh, it can come in. Uh, and this is the thing with the word bearers, is there's, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, rules, crossover rules that kind yep. of link in with this, that, and the other. Um, I also think this is a cool um, conversion opportunity, going back to using the um, Blade Slave that we saw in the Hashtag Heresy Hammer. I think that's a perfect opportunity to use one of those models awesome. for mm. something like this. Um, unswerving Devotion. Any units that include at least one model with the Legion as a starter's word bearer's special rule and have at least one model within six inches of a Warlord with this trait, including the Warlord himself and any unit he has joined, automatically pass the first failed morale check or pinning test they're called upon to make each turn. In addition, an army whose Warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction during the opposing player's shooting phase, as long as the Warlord has not been removed as a casualty. 
So again, I think it's another good one, to be honest. Um, just the ability to ignore morale or pinning is is pretty fucking huge, really. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, any other thoughts on that? I mean, it's it's good if you're um, if you're getting deep struck on, right? Because mm. you're just ignoring the pinning. Yeah, the yeah. So that's pretty uh, cool. And yep. then Iconoclast. Uh, John, do you want to read this one? Yeah, yeah absolutely. A Warlord with this trait and any unit he has joined gain a bonus of plus one attack when locked in combat with an enemy unit that includes at least one model with the independent character special rule. A Legion Vexilla or a Legion Standard when making uh, shooting that. attack or melee attack targeting fortification, building or other terrain piece with a toughness characteristic gain a bonus of plus two strength or the strength of any weapons used. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait to make additional reaction during the opposing player's assault phase. So yeah, an additional That's... plus one attack if stuck in combat, wedged in there. Pretty, uh, pretty good. Depending on what you're running them with, if we, uh, if when we look at some of the units that you can stick your warlord in with, like uh, say some Gal War back and give them an extra attack each, and <laughs> yeah, okay. the shooting attack plus two is interesting, isn't it? I mean, you know, mm. against the fortification building or, or terrain. Yeah. Terrain. So right. uh, again, I, I, it's a fluffy one because this is the iconic down attack. buildings, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. They're 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 kind of history before they were the word bearers was that they were the people that destroyed, uh, you know, um, previous uh, enemies, kind of symbols and icons of whatever they believed in like these guys would go in and just literally crush them all to dust and burn everything they'd pile all the books up and burn everything so it it's it's a weird rule when you read it because one's about close combat and then you've got the shooting attack yeah. but it makes sense when you read the fluff uh that 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 they've based it upon um yeah so again i think it's another good one i think i think all three warlord traits are are yeah, really you're not you're not bummed out with any of them really. No. Are, to be honest, and they're all fluffy as well, which I I like. They're 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 good, but also cool. Uh, rights of war, okay. Um, right. Look at all these words. I'm not going to read the Dark Brethren because it is yeah, just, the most get, just to price it for us. What what does it do? Ridiculous amount of fucking words to say something fairly simple. So essentially, you pick an enemy unit as a sacrifice unit, and then if you kill that unit, you get to give one of your units a buff. Um, so the controlling player of detachment using this right of war must assign each point of favour of the Dark Gods to one of the units under their control as soon as it is earned. Uh, for each point of favour of the Dark Gods assigned to a unit, its strength, movement and weapon skill are increased by plus one. It may have no more than three points of favor of the dark gods assigned to it. So right. a unit okay. with two points of favor of the dark gods would increase strength, movement, and weapon skill of the chosen unit by plus two. So you, you pick an enemy unit, you destroy it, you get a point of favor. You can put the point of favor, um, unless I'm misreading something, on any unit. You can put it on dreadnoughts. It doesn't have to be the unit that also killed them. No, no, it's a unit in your army. It doesn't have to be the unit that killed them. Um, the limitations are any one unit from the detachment using this right of war must inflict at least one unsaved wound or whole point of damage on the sacrifice unit in each of their turns or one of the units in the detachment using this right of war selected at random suffers a perils of the war so if you fail to put a wound or hull point on the unit you've chosen to, to kill each time. Then you take a perils of the war. So D3, and if you're lucky, it lands on something with an invulnerable save and you fucking save it anyways. Yeah. Um, an army that includes attachment using this right of war must have the traitor allegiance. Um, yeah. So you could buff a single unit to the point of insanity, can you? Yeah. 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 And then you think, so why do most people not really run Legion Terminator squads? Because they're weapon skill four. Yeah, and there you go. You can make a you can you can shove a legion uh, terminator squad in a tank, kill an enemy unit, pick something easy to just kill straight away, and then boom, they're fucking weapon skill five, uh, strength five, and then they've got an increased movement as well. Like 
It's, it's, I think. Okay, Lee. Go on. I can see this. <laughs> I can see this. It's, you, you take like a fucking, uh, just a normal tax squad and their weapon skill five. You know, you, you take a Come 20 on, squad tax... weapon skill six. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's potentially fucking amazing. Um, Do you have to tell your opponent, um, what the sacrificial unit is? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't honestly know. I mean, I don't think you do. Um, okay. So you then need to kind of write it down. Right? That's the that's the thing. Because you're yeah. I mean, I think when I'm in this, gentlemen, you, you tell them, wouldn't you? You'd be like, I'm going to kill that first. <laughs> you know, you're obviously going to pick something weak and then yeah. crush it mercilessly. A rhino. Right, I mean, you can literally build an army around this. You could literally, I mean, I, I've written a list at the end and, and I, I wrote about 20 lists, but one of my lists was literally like 20, uh, 20 to spoilers, is it? The Tac Marines um, yeah. in a Spartan, buff them once, buff them twice, chuck them in your enemy's face. As they're going down the, the, the table, you're buffing them by killing something easy. Uh, and then you've got a what, like a three hundred point unit that's absolutely kicking face because yeah. weapon skill five dudes are hitting them on fucking fives yeah. and they're hitting them on threes. Like it's potentially insane. Yeah. And then when we look at some of the other characters in the uh, later on, they can buff things as well. Like it, it really, this really is one of those armies where you almost need like a notepad to remember what you're buffing oh. and where. Buy a librarian yeah. as well, buffing them again. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, mate. It's, Layer them up like a delicious it's, cake. Uh, it's fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah, really good. Really good. Uh, okay, that's quite cool. Really, really cool. Last of the Serrated Sun. Uh, John, do you want to give this one a read, mate? Absolutely. So I'd quite like to read the flavor text at the top, if you don't mind, as yeah, well, go for it. just yeah, to yeah. set the scene. So the Serrated Sun chapter of the Word Bearers were the first sons of Lorgar to walk the path of the ruinous powers. Most of its legionaries fell in battle at the hands of the betrayed Raven Guard at the Istvan yeah. Five Dropside Massacre. Later on, the chapter's legacy would be passed on to the Vakra Jal. But for a time, the survivors of the Serrated Sun formed a vengeful, dedicated, and utterly damned elite <laughs> in the 17th Legion and maintained the specialist drop assault doctrines in which it had once been unequaled. So they were the fucking the OGs, the Absolutely. first, the first corrupted chaos boys. That unfortunately, most of them died, but <laughs> those that were left, the last oh, of the Serrated Sun, for instance. Um, so Gal Vorbeck squads may be taking his troop choices in the detachment using this right of war. Boom, <laughs> bosh. Um, all Gal Vorbach squads in a detachment using this right of war may select a Legion Dreadcore drop pod as a dedicated transport. Head over to Patreon if you want to understand how much I love fucking Dreadcore and why. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Heresy Hammer, just three pounds a month. Um, any units composed entirely of models of the infantry unit type and with access to a Legion Rhino as a dedicated transport, this part of a detachment using this right of war may instead select a Legion drop pod as a dedicated transport. The limitations are the attachment of this right of war may not include any units with the movement characteristics of zero whatever or any unit with the artillery unit subtype again head over to Patreon to find out why that might not be such a problem <laughs> <laughs> an army whose primary detachment is using this right of war may not take an allied detachment and it itself cannot be an allied detachment and obviously it is traitor I um so the 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 thing that I hadn't realised is that Galvalback don't have access to a dedicated transport. So no. this, this unlocks a dedicated transport that they wouldn't have had um, mm. access to. Yes, and in the previous edition they had deep strike, and they no longer have deep strike. Got it. Oh suspicious. yeah, that would be fucking filth. Can you imagine? Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing with this is if you do want to run a kind of drop pod esque army, you could take this right. Because not everything has to be in drop pods. You can start yeah. stuff on the table. Like it, yeah. it, there's, there's no real limitations to everything has to be it's in a, vehicle really... or a drop pod. Yeah. Um, 
which is fucking awesome. And and the other one as well, as we'll go into, you can fill up your elite slots really quickly with yeah. word bearers. With Mara Goals. Uh, with Mara yeah. Goals and Gal Vorback. And on this yeah. one, you can whack all your Gal Vorback in the uh, in the troop slot. Like they're not line, but who gives a fuck? They're murdering everything. They're not there to score, they're there to murder things. Yeah. Um, so again, I think I think both of these rights of wars are, are again both fluffy and uh this is so nice. Pretty good. Really good. Really, really good. You can already see like how how you can kind of build some really different armies with it, and and for why, yeah. Like Dark Brethren as well. It just just having some of that stuff where it is a bit more flavorful. It's not just this can be taken as troops. Um, you know, this this gains line. Yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, like I think we're all kind of a bit bored yeah. of those rights of war, really. And like you say, it gives you choices because now you're thinking, well, actually, like that squad is normally a bit shit and most people don't take it. Mm -hmm. If I can buff that before it hits the enemy lines, that's actually kicking face. Yeah. Yeah. So I could I could take a list with an HQ, three, two small squads of Galvalback, one large squad of Galvalback, two Land Raiders, one Spartan. And that's my list, right? That's it, then. Yeah. Like because they don't have to take the drop bots and no. they don't have to take no. the drop bots, no. right? So no, yeah. I could I could just have a list that's as simple as as simple as that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. I like the yeah. flexibility yeah. built within that list. Is brilliant. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. They're both they're both really good. I think these are like we've complained about some of the rules writing. I mean, they've used about twenty thousand too many words on the Dark Brethren. Oh yeah. yeah. But I think these are uh, and and the warlord traits. I think they've got them bang on. I think they're fluffy and good. They're not just generic, like you say. This gets line. This gets that. The connoisseur's yeah. choice so far. Yes. Yeah, do you yeah, um, I think so? Yeah. Do you reckon the rules rise are paid by the word? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I think they. If they are, they they they're not paying a mortgage off, are they? Fucking are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Armory of the Wide Bearers, the Burning Law. Uh, so any Legion Praetor, Cataphracti Praetor, or Tartarus Praetor, or Legion as a status, Wide Bearer Special Wall may select the Burning Law upgrade for plus 25 points. A model with the Burning Law upgrade gains the Corrupted and Psycho Unit subtypes, as well as the Diabolism Discipline. Um, cool. So, yeah. So in order to use enslaved by darkness you either have to be a diabolist am i right about that yeah a diabolist yeah. or a legion plator with burning lord you can't have no no so, dark channeling uh, okay. with the traitor Sorry. allegiance and the infantry or dreadnought unit type as well as a legion as a starters word bearer special rule may be upgraded with dark channeling okay for plus 25 points per unit all models okay. in the unit with this upgrade gain the corrupted unit subtype got it okay so, so it could be anybody all right so, so yeah so if you're taking a praetor you would take burning law because why the fuck would you not they're the same points but yeah. if you were taking uh, a centurion say yeah you could give it dark channeling and it's then got the corrupted. And got it. We'll, okay. we'll talk about corrupted in a minute, but basically if you want to put, if you have a unit that's corrupted and you want to put an independent character into that unit, it has to be corrupted. Be corrupted as well. Okay. Um, but we'll talk about them in a minute because the, the diabolism is is one of the um, centurion options. It's a, it's a bit of a trap, but on this guy, on the Praetor, it's, it's fucking brilliant. It's um, good, isn't it? But we've also got uh, some weapons. Uh, Rob, do you want to go through these? Uh, yeah, which I'm, fucking I'm, guy gets access to a tainted claw? Jesus Christ! This uh, is that, well. Let me let person. me tell you. Let me tell you right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Any model with both the character subtype and the word bearer special rule may exchange a power weapon for a tainted blade, tainted axe, or tainted maul for ten points. Oh, I see. But a tainted. Ah, oh, so the tainted claws must be Gal Vorbeck, surely. Yeah. No. No? No. Yeah, we'll come to it. Uh, oh, it's a Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, it they all come with murderous strike. They're all a uh, melee weapon. The axe is obviously unwieldy. Um, uh, yeah, they're just 
Oh, and then the Tainted Blade has rending six up. But the most important thing is they've got fucking murderous strike, haven't they? I mean, that's the, yeah. that's the thing you're paying for here. Mate, exchange for 10.6. That's great. Yeah, that's brilliant. I really like that. Cool conversion yeah. options, I think. Tainted Maul is no joke. No. No joke. No. Murderous strike. It's like, imagine, so uh, it's got to have the, both the characters. So you couldn't have a veteran squad all with Tainted. No, weapons. no. It's just like the sergeant, right? And I have it, to say, that when you, like, like going into the war. Yeah, zone. and when you start looking at sergeants and stuff, it kind of you start looking at points, and you're a bit like, is it worth it just yeah. from murderous strike? Um, yeah, or just, just again, it's a, massive power it's a, fist. It's, yeah, it's it's a good option, but you start looking at the points cost. Uh, I think sometimes it's don't mind this. not worth it. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. cool. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, then we have, where did you get up to? Do you read the talents? Uh, no, I didn't read either of them because, uh, but I, so the Tainted Claw is for the Maragal Dreadnought. Yeah. Um, so it's strength nine, AP two, it's uh, brutal two with murder strike five up. So it's like a weird combination of the chain fist and the, wow. the brutal fist, uh, right? Like, was, because, yeah, yeah it's got inter- yeah, really interesting set of rules combined together and then the tainted talents which i assume is the gal fallback but maybe yeah. maybe wrong here yeah. um is strength user uh bear in mind that like that strength user can be buffed to insanity with dark breath yeah <laughs> um, uh so uh strength yeah because they must be strength fi- sorry I'm, I'm skipping ahead here but basically <laughs> they're strength five and yeah. then if you get you can destroy three units with that thing then you can buff strength eight, eight. <laughs> uh, so, so strength user ap3 melee rending six up and also murderous strike six up as well that's pretty cool that's pretty that's pretty nice yeah i can see how you mean that they they could be a bit of a trap for sergeants and things like that you certainly yeah. would want them all on like if you could just ex- exchange a maul for a tainted maul on any guy that would be great but um yeah but i can i can see how they might be Bit of a trap. Uh, and then up next we have the warp fire weapons. Uh, basically, you can upgrade a uh, plasma pistol to a warp fire pistol for five points per model, a plasma gun or plasma blaster for a warp fire blaster for five points per model, or a plasma cannon or gravis plasma cannon for a warp fire cannon for plus five points. Um, and essentially, they're one strength less than their plasma uh, equivalent but you get um pinning and that's pretty the warp good. Fire, hey that's pretty good like the pinning's really useful and yeah. the warp fire blaster is 24 inches um which is fucking awesome yeah i think that no, the, um yeah and it's assault too as well yeah, there's no rapid fire, it's assault. So it's just two, oh. two shots. Yeah, so that is the because the 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 lack of strength isn't so much of an issue because you're still wounding on twos. Yeah. And it's not like the seven was an instant death. Like no. and and this has now got pinning as well. So it's probably worth mm. the upgrade overall, I think. I quite like this. This is good. I'm I'm, I, I'm I'm liking this. I think that the warp fire blaster is awesome on terminators because mm-hmm. they're one of them units. Yeah. That, they punch something, they kill it, and then they're often kind of like trying to run to well, or run a walk towards something. And you can keep popping away with the warp fire blaster and potentially pin a unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've yet to see it, but I'd love to see a um, support squad with just warp fire blasters going fucking insane, just roll up in a rhino and and yeah. gun down an enemy. Um, but the or a drop pod. Is, or a drop pod, yeah, again, and they're perfect for drop pod. Because you don't have to get so close, twenty-four yeah. inches away, and you're still hitting them with two shots. Um, oh, that's so good! That's so good. I think they're really good. Like a squad of just I would, a support squad with these is just fucking nuts. Yeah. The one I would probably stay away from is the warp fire cannon, personally. Yeah. Um, I think the three-inch blast kind of just makes it not really worth it, to be honest. But. Yeah. Uh, oh, just on, on the on a heavy support plasma squad, it would be fine. But it's on the gravis because the, I think is the is the gravis no, plasma squad cannon or gravis it's plasma cannon or gravis plasma cannon. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is a normal gravis plasma a five inch blast? Mm. I think no, it I, is. 
it's three inch, I think. It's just the ones on the Predators, the Plasma Blast Cannon, I think it is, whatever it is. That's, um... Well, why don't you carry on? I should double check. Uh, no, Plasma Cannon's three inch blast. Ah. So it's a gra- the Gravis Plasma Cannon. Uh, the Gravis is uh, five inch large. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Oh, so okay. on, on normal Plasma Cannons, I think it's good. Yeah. On a, on a Gravis, it's not. It's not. Don't bother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, again, pretty cool. Um, and then we've got bolt spitters, which are oh, Christ. the cow fall back. I don't. They're, they're kind of pointless, really. Bolt spitter is twenty-four inch string four AP five rapid fire, and then the greater bolt spitter is forty-eight inch strength five AP four heavy six twin linked. Um, cool. Okay. Like. I, I don't I don't know why they didn't just keep them as bolters, but um, it is, is it, what it is. A greater bolt spitter, I assume that's what. So a, a Marigal, is it? Kind of Marigal. I thing? believe so. I honestly, I'm not sure because I wouldn't run it. Okay. Uh, well, we can have a look at that as we go through. Comments. Yeah. Uh, so the corrupted unit substance is something we touched on. Uh, John, do you want to go through these? Oh, 100%. So, <laughs> models with the corrupt unit subtype are subject to the following rules and restrictions. All models with the corrupt unit subtype gain the fear one special rule. Any hits inflicted on a model with the corrupted unit subtype by a weapon with the force or psychic foes special rule gain the instant death special rule. Ooh. Yeah, not ideal. No. Um, any units composed entirely of models with the corrupted unit subtype is immune to the effects of fear. Automatically passes a regroup test and cannot choose to fail a morale check due to our weapons are useless special rule. When you compose entirely models with the corrupt unit subtype fails a morale check, it does not fall back as per the standard rules, but instead suffers D3 wounds and no saves or damage mitigation rolls of any kind allowed. And no model that does not have the corrupted unit subtype or the demon unit subtype may join a unit that includes one or more models with the corrupted unit subtype. Yes. So they this- cause fear... But they can be absolutely mega murdered by psychers. Yeah, essentially, don't play Thousand Suns. Like that's all I would say if you're Ooh, taking yeah. a corrupted army or uh, do um, do the custodes. They have some sort of fancy rule against um, corrupted. I think uh, so I it think... might it might be the nemesis rule. I have to double check, but I think yeah. Being... So I think potentially custodes could absolutely batter your army if it was all corrupted. I think you've got to be with this again. This is just a quick reading of this, but you've got to be really careful about adding dark channeling onto dreadnoughts. I think because you're so with psychers, you know, you you've got. Yeah, double I dreadnought. think like, you just wouldn't bother to be honest yeah. uh, putting it on a dreadnought. I think for twenty five points. You're gaining fear, which is great, but I don't think it's worth the 25 points. I think where you want to put this on is your 20-man despoiler squad that you've buffed to weapon skill five and is now charging across the table. Yeah. Because they're causing fear, but also they're not just going to run away. You're going to lose potentially three dudes if you fail a morale check. Yeah. Yeah. but you, it does leave your commander like so, um, you know, open to psychers and things like that with, with the instant death. Yeah, I think again, you, unless you're playing something like Thousand Suns, which unless you're playing it at a club or something, yeah. you're probably not really going to play. Going to come against it, okay. You don't really see, you know, you, you do see librarians, but I mean, either just stay away from him or 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 just fucking kill the librarian with you from far away like, let me get plus one plasma plasma plus the weapon skill and plus one attack <laughs> <laughs> um but it is something you have to be aware of like you yeah. do like i lost an entire gal warback squad to some thousand sun dickheads because they powered up their force weapons right okay yeah just, and they're all it's just death yeah. just absolutely batters you like it is something that you have to uh, think about but again I think that's a good thing yeah because otherwise this is just an instant take like yeah fuck it I don't run away I cause fear 25 points bosh like it has a, a negative uh which is only a good thing I think um but yeah, yeah that's that's the corrupted cool. and then we have the uh, uh the uh 25 points 
uh, upgrade to Centurion or Cataphracty or Tartarus Centurion uh, gains the Corrupted and Psycho Unit subtype and gains the Diabolism uh, discipline and can exchange a power weapon for a force weapon at no additional points cost. So the um, Diabolist uh, psychic power, when a charge is declared for a model with this power or for a unit that includes a model with this power, the controlling player may choose to make a psychic check for the model before any dice are rolled to determine the charge distance of that charge. If the psychic check is successful, then the model with this power gains the Hammer of Wrath free special rule and increases both their strength and toughness characteristics by plus one for the duration of that soul uh, phase. If the check is failed, then the model suffers perils of the warp and once that has been resolved, gains plus one to both its strength and toughness characteristics until start of control plays next uh, turn. Right. So, so you, uh, you can basically, yeah, buff, buff your character yeah, um, so like combined with enslaved by darkness, combined with the dark brethren, combined yeah. with diabol the bur like the burning law and the diabol yeah. discipline, you could get a yeah. fucking nuts praetor. You rope. can you can make a Superman. So yeah. where I think the diabolist is a bit of a trap is this is fine, but the the diabolist isn't a, a combat monster. Yeah, yeah. So you're buffing him for combat. But yeah. it, it's good. You'd be better to have the flexibility of a normal librarian, I guess. I think, so. yeah. I think so. A normal, a normal librarian can take biomancy. Well, yeah. this is it exactly. So yeah. it kind of negates it. I mean, it's fluffy, it's cool, but you get this if you take law, uh, burning law on your pra uh, praetor. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I, this is fucking brilliant. Yeah, because yeah. then he's plus one strength, plus one toughness. Suddenly he's not getting instant killed by that power fist. You know, he's he's fucking. It, it's it doesn't sound like it should be amazing, but it fucking really is. It's when stacked well. when stacked with all the other things potentially. Even it's... just this on on a on a praetor, if you if you have him with a paragon blade or something. He's, he's nine times out of ten going to kick face like it, it, yeah. in a challenge. Mm -hmm. It makes him so survivable, that toughness yeah. five. It really does. Yeah, I don't mind this at all. It, it's yeah, really it's great. good. Yeah. Really good. You just have to remember to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus, yeah. Uh, you don't want to get caught up in combat with uh, with a with a, a word bearer's praetor, do you? Or, no, like, he's going to fucking absolutely mega you. Yeah. You can yeah. Yeah. Take your eyes out. Fuck. I mean, you take the warlord trait that gives him the plus one... Uh, was it strength and toughness in the turns one, two, three, whatever it was, and then you've yeah. released and then that, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. It's fucking insane. Like, and with that, then suddenly dropping down one in the turn six, if you're buffing him in combat. I see, yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's yeah. not as terrible. You just yeah. have to play it very well. Um yeah. and then the psychic weapon, Hellfire is a template, strength seven, AP four, assault one, rending six plus. Deflagrate and then psychic focus is obviously take a psychic check before before using it. I don't hate that. Which, I think that's all right. Which again yeah. is, is, is pretty good, isn't it? It's not yeah. it's not bad. Um yeah, yeah like word bearers so far, they're they're pretty fucking good. There's yeah, a, really cool. Yeah, really cool. There's a lot of uh there's a lot of thinking involved with these, I find. Yeah. Which is why I struggle. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, so we're into the units. So that's the, uh, the I, I, units. one thing I would so, sorry, Lee, just just Maybe. on the again, like my knowledge of word barriers is is limited by what we've done so far, but they definitely uh, seem to be an army that you want in the main detachment rather than the allied detachment because um, you know the the um, uh, the dark brethren right of war can't be used as an allied detachment. No, you really want to lean into. Um, the warlord traits because they're all pretty pretty good particularly enslaved by darkness um and yeah so it seems like it would be better as a main detachment than, than an ally yeah. i i tend to find that unless you're running something specific like the um the serrated sun right of war that it l lends it into a larger army yeah you want to be maximizing your troop choices. If you're taking corrupted, you know, it's 25 points, whether you take 10 or 20. So you yeah. want to maximize that on larger, yes. larger squads, which again, I really like because that leans into the Legion fluff, which is their squads were larger. They tended to run 20 plus 
uh, tactical squads. That 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 was the one of the, their, one of the biggest legions, right? So yeah, hard. yeah, and they ran like mass infantry. They would just swamp an area with thousands of dudes. Uh, so again, the rules the rules really do lean into the fluff of the legion, which you don't necessarily see on on some other armies. Like I, I think they've done a really good job with the rules writing for these guys. Yeah, it's awesome. yeah, this is really nice. Um, so up next is Lorgar, uh, probably the most hated Primarch of the Legion of the uh, Heresy. <laughs> he uh, he's renowned for being a bit of a whinge bag, but we'll have a look at his rules. Well, he used to be shit in the previous edition as well. He was yeah, but again, garbage. I think he suffered from the fairly. What, what book was he in? Was he two or three? Yeah, that is true. So he didn't used to be shit if he took... Um, oh, if he took his... Invisibility. Oh, yeah. Do you remember when there was a problem? No. <laughs> yeah, I forgot <laughs> you know, all about that. He snapped the man, and then it was close combat yeah. at sixes. It was on took the his night. Harry Potter cloak and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking <laughs> hell. What a time to be alive that was, eh? <laughs> I forgot all about that. Yeah. For those that don't know, you could make Lorgar invisible, and then he could basically just run around and jap slap everyone, and they just would just... Just do anything about Do anything in return. Mm. <laughs> it was like rust on steroids. You just couldn't... They, they fact all yeah, or when or that. when or when Magnus was first released and he was just like this absolute terror weapon. Yeah. <laughs> they would just turn up and just go oh. D D D. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. Right. Uh Rob, do you want to do the honors on this one? Yeah, sure. So um uh movement eight, so uh that means that he can also plus one to the charge as well. Uh he's got weapon skill six, which isn't great. Uh this skill six, uh Every, basically everything is six apart from his attacks which is five and the ship ten as a chop save uh he's uh got various war gear options which we'll go through in a minute he's interestingly he's got it will not die four up that's pretty fucking mm. amazing is that yeah, the equivalent of, grenades. Uh, is that the equivalent of what vulcan has i think pretty sure it's Ooh, yeah i think so yeah um and he's also got crusader so i'd have to double check what crusader um uh, yeah. Does maybe somebody can check the rule book just to double check that? But I assume it's about um, it was like adding D3 to your sweeping advances previously. Yeah, I think it's changed, doesn't it? Cool. Well, uh, and you can also for another 25 points, uh, make him Lorgar transfigured. Uh, the sire of the word bearer's rule, uh, means that uh, so all units composed entirely of models which have the word bearer's rule. Uh, and can draw line of sight to Lorgar at plus one to the result of any charge distance rolls are made for them and may use Lorgar's leadership and all leadership tests, morale checks, and pinning tests made for them. That's pretty fucking amazing. Uh, in addition, an army of Lorgar's uh, as the warlord can get an, an additional reaction in the assault phase. That That's really strong, that. That is good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, really, really good. Um, Crusader is, uh, you roll an additional d6 when you're sweeping advancing and discard the lowest. That's great. Again, that's great. Like all to do with leadership, which is so, is just so critical in this edition. Um, yeah. He can take the thermaturgy, um, psychic discipline uh, or divination. So not the best ones, but still, uh, still pretty cool. Uh, divination. There's nothing wrong with divination. I should no, say. it's not. Again, it's we're not talking about they're good. But we're talking about best. buffing characters and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, um, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, and the power of the word. So this one was Trobiet. This this is like so good and a real good reason to take a command squad. So any Legion command squad uh, selected as a retinue with Lorgar as its leader gains the fearless and feel no pain for up special rules. Fucking <laughs> nuts. Fucking that nuts. is so good. <laughs> So good and such a great conversion, like opportunity. Oh my for, Christ! For well, unbelievable. So, in addition, once per battle, one friendly unit composed entirely models with the infantry or cavalry unit type with at least one model within eighteen inches of Lorgar may be selected at the start of any game turn. The chosen unit gains the fearless and feel no pain special rules for the duration of the game. So not only can he take a command squad lead, he can also be like that unit over there also has all the abilities of my command squad as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's pretty oh, nice. And then if that you stack unreal. that with you stack that with all the other shit that the word the word bearers can get, it, it makes for a really tough unit. It like, just I, puts into perspective just how dog shit Perturavo is. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Rubbish, thing though the that, worst hurts, that that hurts this 
is the fat ruling about um, the command squad being the combined and, yeah, voice. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that really hurts him. So oh, something to that? sorry. So, so basically, your sorry, command no. squad and your Primarch take up the uh, when you're talking about the 25 percent rule, like for for a Primarch. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah so because yeah. remember we talked about the points level required to run Perturabo and Six Iron Circle. Yeah, it's yeah. like you can't play that in like a game of less than like seven thousand eight hundred points. And yeah. and the trouble with this as well, if you want to take a full command squad, they're not going to fit in a land raider with Lorgar. Because he's too bulky, so the points start going up and up and up. To be fair, though, to be fair, you could um, put him with. It doesn't have to go with. I mean, I wouldn't put him with the Terminator Command Squad for starters. No, I mean you don't have to. No, because also as well, he's movement eight and he gets plus one to charge. Right, so yeah, I would. I would maybe consider putting him with a stand, and because you've got four at field no pain, maybe consider putting him with a standard Command Squad or Tartarus Command Squad. Slap some shields on him. Tartarus Command Squad, and then attach a Warmonger to them. Teleport (laughs) those things in. Yeah, nice. That, that could be a good way to go. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's 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 really cool. So he's got uh, some great rules, and I like the fact you can just choose another unit to have that. So, um, mm. yeah, that's really wicked. And then yeah. you can also buff. You're those not often though. Sorry, before yeah. I cut in, we, we let's go back to the the, the Primarch's command squads and twenty five percent. So, mm. um, he's only four fifty as Lorgar transfigured four two five base. Rate. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, let's say most games are played at three thousand points. That still leaves you three hundred points for a card. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's just something still a lot of points. Conscious. I think it's just something to be conscious of. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely make it uh, work and definitely oh, still work. God. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so the armor of the word, he Sorry. gets a two up, four up. Uh, but this invulnerable save increases to three up against any wound inflicted by a weapon with a force or psychic face of special rules. And wounds inflicted by perils of the war, which is brilliant. Uh, so that's great. Um, his devotion weapon, which is his ranged weapon, is range 12, strength 8, AP 2. That's pretty fucking good. Uh, pistol yeah. one, cursive 2, Braviton Pulse, Haywire, Mastercrafted. That's pretty fucking good, making them concuss. Like, concussive 2 is fucking awesome. Absolute yeah. fucking. And then the, uh, yeah. the command squad weighed in with their. Yeah. Yeah. Fearless, yeah, brilliant. Well, they'll be well with weapon skill six as well, aren't they? The fucking command squad. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> Luminarum. So it's got. We have gone through this previously, but it's plus two strength. Uh, AP two melee mastercrafted arm bang, and then brutal two as well. So it's really good to see a brutal two weapon. Can I just check these? So if I am a, uh, if I am a dark brethren, and I put one unit, what's it called? The favor of the dark gods. Yeah. So I could put that on my command squad on Lorgar, and then Lorgar also gets buffed as well, does he? So, uh, so it, it depends how you read the rules, to be honest, because some people will argue that you buff the unit or the independent character, you don't buff them all. Yeah, so because but because it's a command squad, I can't separate. I can't physically separate them. They kind of. I thought they just count as a whole unit. Yeah, separated. I honestly, I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will double check the command yeah. squad rules in a bit, but I just think that that's interesting that you can also buff that that potentially buff that unit, which is pretty yeah. Um, and then Lorgar transfigured. Uh, so this is your twenty five point upgrade. Uh, he gains the corrupted unit subtype uh, and replaces the thermaturgy and divination psychic disciplines with the anathemata and diabolism, diabolism psychic disciplines. So we just talked about that. So that's plus one strength, plus one toughness. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition, an army that includes Logos just may fill any non compulsory slots of its four sword chart with units from the fucking Ruin Storm Demon Army list yet to be fucking... Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. These choices are paid for with well normal points, done. but they must begin in the battle with reserve and may only enter play by means of the Breach of the Veil psychic power. Fuck knows what any of that does yet. Nope, because it doesn't actually exist. So. Well, Breach of the Veil does exist. Could not be worse, Ben. Breach of the Veil is how you... Uh, 
manifest it. demons, right? Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. Well, rinsed on demon army, this doesn't fucking exist yet. Exactly. No, that doesn't exist. Fuck. Just, you can have commander, presumably. Just c- come on in, can't you? I mean, he's the only one we've got rules for at the moment. No, f- no, fits in the Lord of Warsaw, doesn't he? Ah, good. Um, so um, all in all, yeah. he's a pretty fucking beastly character. He's um, good. Brutal, brutal two stacked. strike initiative as well. Is yeah. no especially joke. when stacked with other shit. Like the weapon yeah. skill sticks isn't amazing. Um, because he's going to be hitting Sigismund on fives, right? Um, but um, you can. But Sigismund, no, nah, Sigismund will be concussed. Um, yeah. Of course. Because yeah. he's going to use divination on himself to give himself precision shots, precision strikes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And then he's going to concuss Sigismund with devotion and then smack him. <laughs> yeah. um, um, awesome character. Yeah, it's great. I really I, like, genuinely, I'm really liking this. Like, on paper, mediocre, but when you really dig into the buffs and like we talked yeah. about with yeah. like off on another topic with some of these armies, it's like Thousand Suns, where you've really got to lean into the technical yeah. nature of them and the overlapping buffs. And when we talked about Mechanicum, it's a similar thing as well. Like on paper, people just go, ooh. Actually, when you dig into it, you're like... It's because really leadership cool. isn't sexy, but it is necessary. And actually, Yeah, that is like, true. That, leadership that is the problem. Sexy. Yeah, and I think that but, like but... shooting shit is sexy, but leadership is less yeah. sexy. It's, it's, it's interesting. Plus, cause... Yeah, because yeah, like, you look at, at an example like like the Iron Warriors, such a straightforward basic legion, but with a yeah. terrible fucking Primark. Look at this, the <laughs> web bearers, like on paper, like a bit run of the mill. You just scratch me to surface. Great Primark. Such a yeah. good force multiplier. Just like yeah. and then oh, yeah, 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 overlap, yeah. bring it all the other all the other interesting elements of the, the Legion have got as their sort of specific requirements into play. Really, yeah. really interesting. Like yeah. I'm really, really liking this. If you it's yeah. this is a proper thinking man's army. It is, yeah. I'm and like, it's interesting because I know um I know when the edition first dropped. And everyone, like, everywhere I read was like, oh, word bearers are shit, word bearers are rubbish, wow, 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 wow. And I'm reading the rules thinking, are you reading the same fucking book as me? Because, yeah. like, they're not obviously good, but... They're not, like, that's the thing. That's exactly good. it, right? Yeah. It's not just plus one or, like, minus one to the strength of all yeah. incoming, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. bullshit, yeah. or plus one to fucking wound red noughts and vehicles. Yeah, and again, I really like it because the the rules are good, but they also fit in with the fluff. He's not yeah, the best absolutely monster in the world, but he buffs the fuck out of his dudes, and actually, he still packs a punch. You know, brutal to fucking strength eight. You know, he's going to fuck you up if you piss him off. And that's yeah. just not... base stats as well. That's not even yeah. Without yeah, buffing. I fucking love this. Is really good. Don't transfigure him. That's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so up next we have um, oh, I've, yeah I've done it out of sync uh, so I do like and the uh, Blade Slaves uh, John do you want to go through these mate? Oh, absolutely I want to go through this one right settle in because as you can see these guys have got many okay. many rules so Zardu and the two Blade Slaves are 300 points. Uh, Zardu is a weapon skill 5, BS 5, strength toughness 4, 4 wounds. Nice. Initiative 5, 4 attacks. And the Blade Slaves are, again, movement 7, weapon skill 5, only BS 4, but strength 6, toughness 5, 3 wounds each, initiative 5, and 3 attacks with a 3-up save. So 300 points gets you Zardu and two um, Anakitis Cull Blade Slaves. Uh, they are corrupted, psychers, characters, and unique, and the blaze slaves themselves are corrupted. Zardu's got a bolt pistol, the Azurdar Chalice, Artificer Armor 9 Halo, Panoply of Flame, and some grenades. And the blade slaves have got plasma pistol, their specific blade, power armor, and some grenades. Settle in, boys. <laughs> Zardu has got the following rules Master of the Legion, which is tasty. Genuinely is really tasty. Uh, independent character is relentless. He's fearless. Hatred, loyalist, binder of souls. And he has his own unique wall of traits, which is the eater of wisdom. And the blade slaves have got rage two. No joke. Bulky two, feel no pain, five up chosen warriors. And they are also um, relentless. So the Eater of Wisdom is Zardu's unique Warlord trait. Uh, if Zardu Lack is the army's Warlord, then the controlling player may choose up to three friendly units composed entirely of models with a corrupted unit subtype from the same army Zardu Lack at the beginning of the battle before any models are deployed. 
All models in each of the select units get a bonus of plus one to their strength and movement characteristics, Ooh. but must take a leadership test at the end of each of the control and player's turns. If the test is failed, the unit suffers perils of the warp. Whilst if it's not failed, there is no effect that turn. In addition, an army was Zardi as its warlord may take an additional reaction during the opposing player's assault phase as long as Zardi lack has not been removed as a casualty. So you can then your Maragals and or um, Gal Vorbach can then be movement. So your 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 Maragal can be movement nine. So that would bracket him up to being plus two to charge, and your Gal Vorbach can be base strength six, base movement eight, and therefore bracket it up to plus one to charge as well. Yeah, yeah. it's no bad. Um... It's nay bad at all. What's his um? What's his war gear do, please? Can you uh, oh, here we go. Scoot over to the next page. So his unique um force weapon is uh strength as user AP two melee unwieldy force. I mean, he's not going to. He shouldn't really be getting into combat. But that's why he's got two fucking unholy bodyguards to do his fight <laughs> for him. Uh, they have got the Anakatis blade. Uh, which is strength user, and they're strength six, aren't they? Did I say? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. AP three, murderer strike five up, and brutal two. <sighs> and then also his the other unique piece of war gear is um, the panoply of flame. So all models with the warbearer special within twelve inches of the panoply of flame add plus one modifier to their score when determining victory in assaults, and plus one for sweeping advances. So we've already discussed. That you know, we've got uh, scenarios where the word bearers are already in a draw. So if you lose by one, you've actually won by one because yeah. you combine that with yeah. their unique rather yeah. or their um, unique uh, whatever it is, their thing, their legion rule. Yeah, their thing, their thing. Um, binder of souls as I'd like is the psychic discipline that's soul binding and may not select any other psychic discipline. Should we see what soul binding does, guys? Take a journey with me, open the page of this book, we'll look inside. Um, Soul binding psychic power. When an enemy unit declares, it will make a reaction to Zardulak or any unit he's joined. The controlling player may choose to have Zardulak immediately suffer perils of the warp, resolving all wounds inflicted before any part of the reaction is resolved. If Zardu is not removed as a casualty, then the reaction is cancelled. Oh. Okay. Oh. The reactive player does not expend the point of their reaction allotments, and if the reaction could not be used only limited number of times, it's not considered to have been used in this instance. And the unit that's declared the reaction gains no benefits and takes no action. Okie doke. Fuck. And then telepathic chains as psychic weapon. This is neat. I like this. Uh, telepathic chains is range 36, strength 2, no AP, but it's assault 4, pinning, shell shock 3. Powerful. If you can cause a wound in there, you are uh, you're taking a test at minus three. Fucking shell want. shock three is no fucking joke, is it? Jesus Christ. Wow. Um, yeah, he's fucking awesome, isn't he? Essentially, yeah, he's really cool. Like, he's really cool. good. And again, his his warlord trait. You know, you're buffing strength and movement. Dude, yeah, that's so nice. You know, so, you're potentially so nice. already. You take the uh, warlord trait. They're already. You know, you you kill a unit. They're getting a. Plus one weapon skill, plus one strength, toughness. You've already got plus one toughness. Depending on what you're arming, say, I don't know, a veteran squad with, you know, you can potentially boost them to strength eight with uh, moles, something like that. Like, you really, you know, there's sometimes it's not even worth it and you just keep another unit as strength five, say. There's mm -hmm. no point necessarily going up to strength, depending on what you're going to be throwing them against. Um but again, it's just options, isn't it? You're just you're adding stuff and adding stuff. And there's layers. Of yeah, there's layers. loads of layers, loads and loads so, of layers. Like you can, know, yeah. can he join with his base slaves another unit, or are they just the? So, right. No, I think we had this in one of our chat groups. So he, I believe he can leave. I can't remember it now. I believe he, he has to start the game with them, but he can leave. And go and join somewhere else. And then can join another unit. But he it's has very... to start the game right. with them. Interesting. It, Where does it, it say that? It was in a fac. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. The other facts. Because in the... Well, previous... I had like 10 years to get this book right the first time. Around, right? Well, yeah. So in the previous edition, you could take Sardu on his own. Right. And then the Blade Slaves were like an add-on. 
Yeah. Mm. And so no one ever took the blade slaves. So I do quite like this because in all the books and all the He's always with them all the time. They're always yeah. there yeah. in the background, just there being those molten, molten men burning yeah. from the inside. Yeah, I yeah. really like that. So do I, you think do... Um, do you think that his is his warlord trait that really makes him good? Yes. So would you ever consider having Zardu and Lorgar in the same army? I, you... I was about to say he has got a Primarch level force multiplication warlord trait without being a Primarch, yeah. but yeah. does that yeah. undo what Lorgar can bring? Lorgar. Uh, because yeah, because obviously he wouldn't be the warlord, right? So I think yeah. that yeah, you need to think carefully about whether you would have Zardu in your force as yeah. well, right? Or whether actually, if you're taking Zardu, you really want him to be the warlord. I think personally, if you're taking Zardu, you're taking him for that warlord trait. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree. But... Three hundred points is a lot. I understand you get two blade slaves that come with him. I get that, but three hundred points is quite a lot for a, for an HQ choice that isn't a prime one. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, um, yeah. So you want to well, leverage all the rules that he's got, but he is good. It's really good, really, really good. Cool. And then up next, we have this oh. fucking chat. Look, Look at, at that. that! What a model. He's huge. Like he's just on a dude. A, the base <laughs> for him is way too small, there, isn't it? Like, yeah, he's a piss take. Yeah, yeah. but I assume yeah. that's a forty mil base. He needs to be on a fifty mil base. Like, yeah. if you've got yeah. him or a planet's painting, for the love of God, put him on a fucking. <laughs> base. Jesus Christ, he's spilling over it there. Uh, Argotal, right? Argotal, uh, two hundred forty points, movement eight, Oof. weapon skill six, ballistic skill five, strength five, toughness five, wounds five, initiative five, attacks wounds four, initiative five. Ten, Fuck ten, my life! Saves two. Fucking plus. hell! <laughs> he has uh, character unique and corrupted. Uh, his war gear is uh, two demonic talons. Umbral pinions, artificial armor, frag grenades, crack grenades. It's got the word bearer special rule, obviously, master of the legion, independent character, relentless, bulky, free, feel no pain, five plus, rage two, and he is a traitor. His warlord trait is the Crimson Lord. If Argul Tal is the army's warlord, then both Argul Tal and any Gal Vorbach unit he joins gains a five plus invulnerable save and the line unit subtype. In addition, an army of Argul Tal as its warlord may make an additional reaction during a play, uh, opposing player's assault phase as long as Argul Tal has not been removed as a casualty. Lee, can I ask you a question? Yes. If I want to add apothecaries to corrupted units, <laughs> yes. do I have to uh upgrade every single apothecary to have the corrupt no. special role. No, just the one unit. Just the unit, because it's it's classed as a unit when you purchase it, I believe. Um so you buy you'd spend 25 points on um on the three guys channeling, and then whatever amount of apothecaries you have in that unit gain dark channeling. Got it. He it's noticeable that he does not for 240 points does not have a four up in vulnerable save. Yeah, Best, I was looks, thinking that. Yeah, it's a five up unless his pinions do something special. Uh I yeah, I'm that's interesting, but he's he's a no. praetor essentially, but it's got a, a, a five up. But you're joined to a um a double back squad. squad, aren't you? So he's gonna have a five plus in run because you're not not gonna join him to a Gal Vorbach squad. Probably ten of the fuckers and then just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them straight down your opponent's throat. With an attached apothecary, obviously. <laughs> With an attached apothecary. <laughs> Uh, so dem demonic talent, uh, strength user, AP free, melee, murderous strike, five plus, rending, five plus. Okay. So he's got two of those, so he gets an extra extra attack as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then he's got rage as well. So he's oh yeah, fucking throwing hell. out some damage. Blender Lord, isn't he? Woo! Can't can't fly though. What a fucking pussy. Um. At the start of the controlling, so umbral pinions. At the start of the control player's movement phase, Argle Tales movement character may be set to a value of 14 for the duration of the control. Oh, fine. Turn. 
This allows Argotel to move up to 14 inch regardless of movement characteristics shown on this profile and gain any other benefits of a movement characteristic of 14, including charge distance. In addition, when moving in this fashion, Argotel ignores terrain while moving charging, but must take danger terrain shifts, blah, blah, blah. Basically, fucking jump back. Um, the argument is that people complained about was if you put him in with a Galvorback squad, then he's not taking advantage of his umbral pinions. Yeah, well, so it suggests to me though that but, that you could potentially put him in a jump pack command squad would be quite a good choice for it, right? Or you just put him with the fucking Galvorback, right? Because he helps to, they keep each other alive. Yeah. And then he just fucks off on his own. And they yeah. fuck off on their own. Because you're going to be buffing yeah. them like differently anyway. He's Ooh. an absolute blender. He can go and mega murder someone. But he do, but doesn't he need to stay with the unit to maintain that five up in one Yeah, but once he but like what I'm saying is he's he's there to get them to where they need to be. And then the turn where they're gonna go and piss off and do the work, then they yeah. piss off independently and do their independent work. Yeah, I can I can it's see. Destiny's Child. Strong yeah. independent demons. I I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I um I would be tempted to put him with a jump pack command squad or a massive fucking twenty man assault squad. Uh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. In Safe, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, but they don't get they won't get any bonuses to charge. Is there any problem? Uh, no. They don't need bonuses to charge because they've already got bonus from setting their jump packs up. Because they've got their, their movement is twelve, so they get plus one for the charge. Yeah. Uh, unless you buff them with the uh, thing and give them plus one movement. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Either way, they're good. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. It's cool. Not yeah. completely over the top, but it's no. Kind of blend he's a thing. true hero of the heresy as well. Uh, all the time. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice that he's not been done dirty, but also isn't completely fucking ape shit. Oh, ape shit. Yeah. Not sure he's worth 240 points. I'm, I don't think he is either, to be honest with you. Right. I think he's worth 195 points. Yeah. I... This, this <laughs> fucking yeah. prick. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. The man Here myth. Is. Oh, Erebus. The, the legend. Erebus. Uh, Go on, then. Read these. I've lost track of who's been reading what, to be honest. I'll do this one. Yeah. Oh, this guy's fair on. Lucky old me. He yeah. is. Uh, he is. A measly 165 bucks, yes. considering that this man started the heresy. That is quite something. Uh, so he has got a movement seven, a pathetic weapon skill of five, considering uh, he could go toe to toe with people like Loken uh, in the law. Uh, this is equal five, um, strength and toughness four, wounds three, initiative five, attacks four, bishop ten, and a two up save. Uh, he has an iron halo. Um, and he also has Master of the Legion. Uh, he's got Relentless, interesting rules have. Uh, Hatred Loyalist, to right, and he also comes with Fearless as well. Uh, quite a cool Warlord trait. So, Shadow Behind the Throne, or at least it's quite a cool name for the Warlord trait. I, I like this. This is cool. If he is the Warlord of the army, and is part of a unit composed entirely of models with any version of the Legion of Starsi's X special rule, no wounds may be allocated to him, regardless of the attacking models, rules, or effects, as long as there is another model in the unit. If High Chaplain Erebus is engaged in a challenge, then this rule does not apply. However, if High Chaplain Erebus' controlling player chooses to refuse a challenge for a unit that includes High Chaplain Erebus, then the opposing player loses the option to stop one model from participating in combat. In addition, an army whose warlord trait with Erebus gains an additional. Oh, in, in, oh hang on. An army. You can have warlord, any phase. High Chaplain Erebus may make an addition in any one of the opposing players' phases. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Really good for 165 points. So he can just. Yeah, that's that's great. That's really cool. I, I love it. It's like the most Erebus rule ever. He can yeah. look yeah. out of combat and still fucking. Stab you when you're not looking. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, um, that's cool. And then uh, presumably, I mean, not in a challenge, but precision strikes can't actually affect him uh, because he can't be targeted by no, yeah, by, by a thing until the last guy is dead. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, 
the Crux Malefica. Uh, so it's plus three strength, AP two melee and unwieldy, uh, and then Harbinger of Chaos. Oh yeah, a detachment with him in may select up to three non-compulsory elites or HQ choices from the Ruinstorm Demon Army list. The fact so that they exist, and at least I imagine is going to be pretty fucking bonkers. Going to be going off the last one. Uh, these are obviously paid for, and then they've got to come in through Breach the Veil, Psychic Power, um, and then he gains the uh, the Breach the Veil, Psychic Power, and the Etheric Lightning Psychic Weapon as well, which you can find in the Esoteris entry. Uh, so quite a cool little model for 165 points, I think. I really like him. I think I think his, his Warlord trait is like, spot on for Erebus. It's just yeah. fucking annoying, sneaky little prick. Yeah. And I like the fact that um a lot of these HQs can take demons. I know we don't have rules for demons yet, but I feel like it's it's quite a unique twist to the word yeah. bearers. Uh in first edition their thing was you could take uh units from the Chaos Demons Codex. But then uh Demons of the Runestorm just became like anyone could take them. So I'm hoping that they don't, you, you, when they do release the rules, I'm hoping that it isn't a case that any traitor legion can take them. I'm hoping you have to have like uh, Issa Terra. Yeah. Um, like keep, cool. You know what I mean? It's it's unique to word bearers at the minute. So hopefully that kind of stays. I well, agree. Weasley and also the access to demons hopefully will mean a pretty good. Uh, and and it's the HQ choice as well, because the East of Terrorist off the top of my head can only bring in elites and uh, non-compulsory elites and troops. Yeah, right. I think so, yeah. So the fact that you can bring a HQ in, and I imagine like a demon prince or some shit is going to be off the chain fucking mental whenever we get the rules for it. Fucking um, it what's a non-compulsory elite? Is that, I assume that's something from a, if, from the Ruinstorm list. Well, uh, if you have to, I don't think of any rights of war that there are, but if you have to take an elite's choice, it can't be one of them. Okay. Yeah. We shall so see like in Demon's List, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything that would have a compulsory elite's unit. No, you interesting. Have. Yeah. Okay. Right. Is it a uh, turd, turd Ferron? No. Right. I'll rattle through this fucking chud ASAP because well, this has been a long rules, episode. That might fucking. They're pretty good, some of them. Yeah, but also, Lee, I'm cooking a casserole. I can fucking smell it burning down. <laughs> Get fucking through this. Uh, so he's slow. He's old. He's weapon skill five. BS four. <laughs> he's strength three, toughness three. He's got four words in Terminator armor, I suppose. He's initiative three, and he's got three attacks. So Corfron's got kind That's of a cool backstory. Um, but he is also an old cunt. <laughs> so, Just an old human. An old human cunt, exactly. So uh, he's been fucking welded into a set of Terminator armor to make him less of an embarrassing fucking menace to the law guard. <laughs> got the Patriarch's Claws, a Digiflame, and a Terminus Consolaris. And he's got, he's Master of the Legion, so he could be in charge. But let's be honest, there's never been a more undeserving person to be in charge. <laughs> Got his bulky two, he feel no pain, it will not die, jealous command, and his warlord trait is the dark oratory. So dark oratory. When Corfron is the warlord of the army, then the controlling player can choose one of the one of the following two options at the beginning of each of their own turns. So each turn. Cruel invective. All enemy units with at least one model within 12 inches of Corfron at the start of Corfron controlling player's turn must take an immediate pinning test and become pinned if the test is failed. That's fucking unreal. Jesus, titty fucking yeah. Christ, that's great. Yeah. It's a shame that he's got to be the warlord for this to happen, though, because you're not going to fucking yeah. bellend as your warlord, are you? <laughs> Imagine turning up to an event and call for on as your warlord. Christ almighty. Lose all sorts of <laughs> Threatening, sorry, threatening entreaties. Call for on and the unit he has joined gain the fearless special rule until the start of the controlling player's next turn. But all models other than call for on in the unit reduce their weapon skill and blizzard skill by one. Sorry, you buff it back up anyway. Um, and you get an additional soul phase reaction, whatever. Get out of bed if you for on. What's the next bit? Some all, it, all invective is just that's fucking nuts. That's that's, that's nuts, right? That's just take a pinning test, yeah. 
But yeah. as I said, we, we've got three or four guys who have got really like the standard warlord traits are excellent, right? Argle Tile, very cool, especially if you're building into Serrated Sun. Erebus, really neat. And Zardu, also excellent. And then you've got Lorgar. And if you think, no, 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 I don't want any of that. I want Kor Faron as my warlord. <laughs> okay, Jealous Command. Kor, if Kor Faron or Lorgar is not chosen as the warlord of the army that Kor Faron is part of, then his leadership is reduced by one and he gains the hatred every Oh, person. interesting. Wow, hey. When Corferon is included in the same army as Lorgar, both models gain plus one weapon skill and the H everything special rule are part what? of the same unit. Hey. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. points. This is fucking There nice. it is. so good. <laughs> so his armor save grants him a two up armor save and a three up invulnerable save in the shooting phase and five up in the movement and assault phases. He has a strength four AP nothing pistol one flamer. Rubbish. The Patriarch's Claws. Strength as user, so strength three. AP <laughs> two. Okay. I mean, he's not he's got, there for this, is he? He's, he's there to shred. give he's there to give Lorgar plus on weapon skill and hatred. Yeah. That's, That's why you're taking him, isn't it? Right. Okay, fine. That is why you're taking him. He's actually um, pretty fucking good. Like he's yeah. a decent uh just to be included as an HQ choice or um as your warlord, I he's mm. he's pretty good. Basically, Definitely. daddy daddy makes Lorgar fight better. Uh, but no it's... access to demons through Corfar. Interesting. No, because they all think he's a bit of a bitch, don't they? They they know. Yeah, it's just but a... he had access to the demons in the first iteration of his books. Uh, I honestly don't know because I never uh, even thought. I honestly can better. tell you, it was him and Erebus which unlocked the demons for the web. Uh, interesting. Um. But yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, he's excellent. Yeah, really, really good. Christ, right. Yeah. These fucking guys, the main event, right? <laughs> Although I feel this is potentially the warm up to the main event. Like, uh, okay, right. Fine. Know. They've this got so event. many, so many units, right? It's, they have I know, I hadn't really beat. realized this before I put my dinner on. Otherwise, I would have done something completely <laughs> <things. laughs> oh, isn't it? Well, you shouldn't have put your dinner on, should you? Yeah, Jesus. There we go. I've been recording for four hours. Right, uh, 275 points for five, movement eight, weapon skill five, ballistic skill four, strength five, toughness five, wounds three, uh, initiative five, tax three, leadership nine, save five. Uh, Ooh, four, five. I did not realize they were movement eight base. Yeah, they're quick boys. Oh, uh, corrupted, they have this bolt spitter, tainted talons, frag grenades, crack grenades, power armor. Uh, they are word bearers, funny enough. Relentless, chosen warriors, <laughs> rage two, feel no pain, five plus, bulky two, and traitor. Um, and you can give them a flamer, a melter gun, warp fire blaster, or you can, uh, sorry, every, one in every five, you can give a flamer, melter gun, warp fire blaster, or you can give a tainted, tainted talons uh, for a, another attack. So you have two close combat weapons. It's quite worrying that 10 of these guys are 30 wounds. That yeah. Is, that yeah. Is... Tony's five, three wounds is no joke. Though, to be fair, you fucking catch them in the open with a Vindicator. Uh, they're fucking Yeah, because the Vindicator is done. Eight. Strength 12, mate. Yeah. Okay. Finally, um, the Vindicator um, comes good. Yeah. And then one in every five can take a power weapon or a power fist. Uh, newsflash, take the fucking power fist. Strength <laughs> and power fist. Um, they're fucking awesome. I mean, there's not really much more to say. Don't put them they're in the loco. transport. They're missing nothing. No, they're quick. Uh, either have a big unit, or I quite like the idea of, of a couple of small units just running up the table. Yeah. They're just going to fucking chew through shit. With, uh, it's, I didn't realise they had a feel no pain, so then combined yeah. with um, combined with uh, what's the what's the guy the main Argle Tall big Arg Tall so they've got a three up five up five up with Argle Tall which is yeah very, yeah awesome. uh, yeah or you take Sardu like because they're corrupted um, yeah what did Sardu I can't even remember what Sardu did now was it plus one strength and toughness plus one strength and movement yeah plus, plus one strength, strength and movement, movement. Oh, even quicker strength twelve powerfist. 
<laughs> Thrown out what five five six attacks on the charge. That's... Yeah, no, I think the uh, yeah seven Wait. attacks with the additional tainted talents. God. Fuck yeah, they're, uh, they're... no no because it's not specialist weapon. Uh, ah yeah, you're yeah. right. Oh, that's a shame. Never mind. No, I'm fucking hell. <laughs> Shit, throw him in the bin. Um, Am I playing against Galvo back tomorrow? You bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, they're the first. Yeah. I, I believe right. I'm, next weekend I could be playing against 27 of them. Oh, yeah. excellent. Oh, well That's a lot of wins. And the thing, with these, the thing mm. with these as well is people are like, just shoot them, but they don't just die like that. No. Like the three wounds. Yes, they've only got a three plus save, but they've still got to feel no pain. Yeah. Like, a last they, cannon's just so like, just one wound, fine, I'll take so, it. So, it's spoiler alert, let you behind the veil. As Rob knows, and Lee, I think, knows as well, my list for this event we're going to next weekend does, in fact, have three Demolisher Vindicators in it. Yeah. <laughs> if I do catch those 27 Gal War back into the open. Fucking. Although, I mean, if he spreads them out enough, they're only three inch blast, aren't they? Yeah, but they are brutal free, to be fair. They are going to die. Yeah, true, true. But yeah. Um... There's nothing. There's probably, nothing bad to say about them. Like you can take them as troops the best in a. Trees. They're fucking the great. Wicked. Yeah, love these guys. Um, love these guys. Love these guys. Are these phenomenal. Passion circle. Um, Rob, do you want to go through these, mate? Yeah. Uh, so 125 points base. Uh, you get five guys in the unit. Uh, they've got the incendiary and the iconoclast. Um, so the iconoclast is the uh, sergeant. The only difference between them is that they are the difference of attack. So the iconoclast comes with three attacks and the incendiary comes with two. And then there's a difference in leadership as well with the iconoclast being leadership nine, which is pr pretty good. Like it's, it, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty ace. Um, they come with jump packs. So um, I've not seen many heavy jump pack dudes apart from um, uh, destroyers, which are, I guess these guys are the equivalent of destroyers for yeah. uh, word bearers. Um, but it does mean that they get to re-roll their saves on t uh, against template weapons, but they are movement seven. So they don't get a plus. Oh, no, they would get a plus one for um, uh, because they're, they're jump yeah. packs. Yeah. Uh, so they come with a variety of things. Uh, we'll go through the rules for the Axe Rake and the Hand Flamer a bit. Um, and they also, they come with Melter Bombs, which is uh, absolutely brilliant. That's the fact that you don't need to pay for those is, is fantastic. Um, they are Stubborn and Crusader and Bitter Duty. So you can only attach, obviously, Bitter Duty models uh, to them. I'm assuming Zardy Light doesn't come with uh, Bitter Duty. I don't think he does, no. Uh, I don't think so. Because no. he was like kind of head of the Ashen Circle before, or kind of that's how it was made to seem in the previous. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And Scorch that. So they've got uh, a ton of rules. Um, the sergeant can take Artificer Armor for He's 10 anyways, points. Would you, so. And then the uh, you could also take an Inferno Pistol or a Plasma Pistol on the sergeant. And they're 20 points per model, which I think is probably a bit of a bargain, really. That seems like quite good value. Um, so I'll come to Scorch Earth at the end, but the Axe Rake is plus one strength, AP3, melee, and shred. Uh, so essentially they're kind of lightning pulls, aren't they? But just slightly better because they're plus one strength. Um, the Inferno Pistol is obviously strength A, AP1, pistol one, armor bane, if you want to buy that. But the Hand Flamer they come with is strength four, AP4, torrent six, and pinning. That's so good. Man alive. That's brilliant. Uh, basically, mm. if you're a Solar Auxilia player, you need to really fear these guys. This is... Um, oh, my God, yeah. Just turn around and go. Or a Mechanicum yeah. player, to be fair. Yeah. And then Scorched Earth. So when a model with this special rule inflicts hits due to Hammer of Wrath, a uh, special rule inflicts an additional hit. So a model with Hammer of Wrath, one would inflict two hits. And all hits inflicted due to Hammer of Wrath gain a bonus of plus one to their strength. Uh, this is cumulative with any other modifiers that must be applied to such hits and are counted as flame attacks for those rules that modify such attacks as well. So, um, you know, you can obviously buff the strength of them through various means, uh, warlord traits that might be attached to them, I guess, or um, psychic powers, etc. cetera. Um, so then that would impact that as well. Uh, a pretty ten tasty unit. It's sad that it can't come as a compulsory troops because I think that that would be a, quite a cool um, right of war.
Go for it. Okay. Uh, here he is. The big boy himself. The the fucking... Uh, this I... fucking guy. I don't think I like this model that much. I think it's rubbish model. Yeah, yeah we've totally with you. It's absolute crap. I think most uh, of the good yeah. conversions I've seen are much better than this. I, think. Yeah. I, um, I, am, I yeah. interestingly don't hate this model. I I just think the paint job doesn't do it any favours. Hmm. I think it's unnecessarily busy. Um, yeah. I can't understand how the power plant has got on top of its head facing backwards. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> fucked up, isn't it? Uh, I, I, can, <laughs> I can see what they've done, but it's not It's not my favourite, I think, is it's no, all I say not. about the uh, Marigal. Anyways. You won't see just the torso on this guy being sold. Like, <laughs> no. You don't, run him. But, you don't um, run him for the model. Well, no. What about uh, the rules, though, Lee? Here we go. Marigal Dreadnought, 240 points. Movement, 8. Weapon skill, 6. Oh, not Move. too much, <laughs> Ballistic skill, 3. Strength, 7. Toughness, 7. Wounds, 8. <laughs> Initiative, 5. Attacks, 3. Leadership, 10. Save, 2. Plus. I don't like it. He is corrupted. He comes with a warp fire cannon and a tainted claw with inbuilt bolt spitter. Um, he's got it will not die five plus rampage two shroud of dark fire a cursed pathfinder move through cover, and is obviously a traitor. Um, the move through cover is excellent because move through cover is is the the sleeper rule within that. His contemptors just yeah. don't with them, so um, yeah, that's brilliant. Very so- brilliant. Fucking quick. Um, he comes with a uh, gravel spot spitter, metal cannon, auto cannon, a warp fire cannon, or last cannon. But remember, he is ballistic skill. I was about to say, so you're going to give him the claw, right? He comes with the tainted claw, and that is the correct option. Yeah. Uh, stick two claws on him and just run him straight at your fucking enemy. Especially or, he's got Rampage 2 as well, and his weapons come six. Yeah. Or if you. Uh, watch our latest Patreon that is about to drop tomorrow, I think. Yes. Stick him in a fucking Mastodon with a Leviathan. Oh, yeah, that's the other option. (laughs) Stick three of these in a Mastodon, did you say? Yeah. Well, four. Go nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Can you get four into the army? Oh, you can. It's four at each. Yeah, yeah, it's four at each. (laughs) Um, So, John... uh, Lee, you're just slightly breaking up, just slightly. So maybe John could read us the Shroud of Dark Fire and the Accursed. Um... Yeah, yeah, I'll read some rules for you. Don't you worry. Yeah. I've got you covered. Any yeah. hit allocated to a model with this special rule from a plasma, flame, melt, or Volkite weapon has its strength reduced by one. It's an Iron Hand. In addition, a <laughs> model with this special rule gains a five-up invulnerable save and should <laughs> suffer any unsaved wounds of the instant death special rule. It's not immediately removed the casualty, instead loses D3 wounds like a normal Dreadnought. Uh, if a model with a special rule loses its last wound or hold points, but before it's moved from casualty, all models, both friendly and enemy units, within D6 plus 6. Whoa, in- shit. So it goes hyper mega. Fuck. So yeah, it's going to get, when it goes bang, it goes fucking bang, bang. Um, and it also has the accursed special rule. All models with a demon unit type and or psyker or corrupted sub type must reduce their toughness and strength by one while they're within six inches of a model with a special rule. Oh my days! Interesting. So you really need to keep it away from your own army here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. send it out on its own. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a strange one. It had I think the rules were even worse in the first edition. But essentially, run it on its own. Don't run it near your Gal Warbag or any of your corrupted units. Yeah. Mm. Newsflash: This guy can handle stuff on his own. Like. Just fucking run him straight into the enemy, and if he goes bang, he takes half the enemy with him. So, be, be, like, all oh, right, okay, I see. Oh, I was about, nice. I was, I was about to say, oh, but it affects itself and other Marigal dragons, no. but it doesn't because it's a curse. I see, right? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. love this. No. This is fucking great. What's this not good at? Nothing. Excellent. Yeah, that's awesome. Only strength nine. Okay. You know, that's a really awesome. stupid thing to say. Only strength nine, but it is only strength nine. It's not so good against other like other vehicles. No, but against literally everything else, yeah. anything with the toughness value, this thing is going to absolutely mega murder. Yeah, because it's got five up uh, murder strike as well. Right? Yeah. Woof. Oh lordy. Right. What's next? Unless you take Zardu like and and make him strength plus one, movement plus one. 
but the strength... no, but the weapon is natural weapon. strength. Line. Yeah. Oh, uh, is it? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's not okay. affected by his strength. Uh, so this is the um, exemplary battle unit. Uh, word bearer is procurators. Uh, Rob, do you want to do the honors on these, mate? Yeah. So um, I know fuck all about these, but let's find out about them. So they let's are learn together. What well, they yeah. are one hundred and twenty points. Um, they are two attacks at base. So that's something interesting about them. Um, and leadership seven and leadership eight for the pro curator. Um, the war gear of the pro curator and the pro current are different. Uh, in that, oh, the pro curator comes with an Artheseum. That's a bit fucking cheeky, isn't it? Cheeky. So an Artheseum and Artificer armor, which is quite cool. <laughs> And then their chosen warriors, they've got the grim purpose and flesh harvesters uh, rules, and they are obviously traitors. Uh, so a word bearer's procurator squad, if they don't take a uh, jump pack, can take a legion rhino transport as a dedicated transport, obviously. Uh, so that's quite cool. The fact that they've got a little cheeky enough VCM on the sergeant's quite... Um, Red scorpions like, isn't it? That's uh yeah, that's interesting. Um, you can take an additional 10 procurants for 15 points a model, and they can each be given a warhawk jump pack as well for 10 points uh per model. Uh, and then they've got various uh various weapons that they can also uh, be given as well. Now, the they've got a little thing here: a procurant squad that includes 10 models may upgrade a procurant to an additional procurator for 40 points. And a procurator squad that includes 50 models may upgrade two procurants to procurant. So basically, for every five, you can get a One more procurant. procurant in there as well. So that's quite cool. Uh, the Grim Purpose, a unit that includes any models with a special rule, may not be joined by any model that does not also have this special rule. Uh, this includes Legion Tech Marines and Legion Apothecaries. Don't need Apothecary, obviously. They are one. And then Flesh Harvesters, friendly models with the Psychic dis Disciplines, Harbingers of Chaos, Diabolism, or Anathemata within six inches of a model with a special rule may roll an additional D6 and discard the highest result when making Psychic checks. Additionally, in missions that use victory points that the controlling player gains additional victory point for every enemy unit that is removed as casualty as a result of a sweeping advance made by a unit made up of models with this special rule. Uh, an interesting unit. I suppose it's essentially kind of flesh. Uh, it's kind of got uh, vet stats um, with flesh harvesters and, and, and kind of grim grim purpose. Got, except they've only got one wound as well. Oh yeah, I I think it's I an think interesting it's a, unit. I, I, don't I don't think it's this. the best, um, but so it, I think where I see the purpose for these guys is if you're running someone like Erebus and your plan revolves around. You must bring in the demons. You stick these guys with Erebus, and then you, no, you can't it. stick him with Erebus, can you? Dave? You can stick him near Erebus. Well, you? yeah, near Erebus. Yeah, and then you you get the uh, the additional D six. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, that's where I see these. Um, I think the trouble with these is they're an elite unit. In and an you want army. Walmart or girl, so what's the... Yeah, exactly. You've already bought the, all your elite slots because they're in a master. <laughs> you're you not going to fit them in when you're running four Mara girls, so... Yeah. So, yeah, I just... Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I'm not sold on this, uh, but probably some cool... I think these are rubbish. Yeah. See, I don't think that... I think if you have... If your whole plan revolves around... I mean, it's a bit of a stretch, but if your whole plan revolves around, you know, harboring of chaos, then... I don't think spending 120 points to make sure you get it off is I think, a complete yeah, waste. That's, that's true. But although I think there's more issues about not having rules than there are about rolling. Yeah, cards. absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, there is that as well. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, but... Essentially, <laughs> this is all make-believe right now. Yeah. Uh, so you've got something to work on until uh, demons drop. I Help. cannot believe you it, did this, Lee. I, can't I yeah. you don't think it's cool. But yeah, I I understand the premise, oh, but um, I um, yeah. So we'll wait and see. We'll, we'll come back to this when demons are released, and then you can you can add to your list and see what's what. 
See, oh, you pissed me off now because I think it's a cool list. <laughs> <laughs> you, we we pissed you off. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we had a big discussion as well about well, should we sacrifice a listener's uh, review list for, for for this list? And you, you've done a two thirds of a list because I can't finish it. I will finish it later <laughs> when they give us a rule. Right. Uh, Go for it. Yeah, so uh, thank you to our patrons. Thank you to all our patrons. Um, but a special big super duper thank you to our um, uh, Praetor level patrons uh, in no particular order. Thomas Silverstrin, John McArdle, Nicola Prisk, Tom Hayward, Richard Willis, Igor Provolotsky, Dale Menmoor, Randy Overland, Tom Spear, Ollie Muse, Dave Walker, Andrew G, That Guy Lazar, Gore Crow, Ben Ide, Mike Dorset Wolf, Cody Siverston, Pete Day, Ashley Bowley, Peter King, Alex Robinson, New Aurora Painting, Mark Ainsworth, Chris Levitt, Nicholas Drax, Craig the Celt, Walter Cook the Fourth. Hang on, just moving a box. Uh Ben Robinson, Neil Atherton, Patrick Greenstreet, Bradley Sluice, Simon Whitehouse, Alistair McGill, Chthonic Water Beast, Hammer and Nails 40k, Kerry Love, Dale Barrett, Julian, and Saigon Sadler. Um, we say it every, every show we do, but a massive thank you to all our patrons. We're kind of blown away uh, by the support we keep getting. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice now. It's been um, an emotional day for you, hasn't it, Lee? I mean, it's been draining, to be honest. It I, has been draining. Fucking, yeah. I thought we could have a nice little chat about what we might think's coming with demons, but no, I just get fucking <laughs> taken <laughs> down. <laughs> oh, this is shit. Why haven't you taken four Marigal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's what I was expecting. To be. That's what I was hoping for. We were all hoping for four <laughs> Marigal. Oh, well. Uh, check us out on Instagram, hashtag Heresy Hammer, uh, YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this, please give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to comment, I'll be the only one that comments because these two won't bother. I do occasionally bother. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, if you want to send us a list, uh, heresyhammer30k at gmail.com. Make sure it's not any fucking demons in it for sending it through. Thanks. <laughs> Send all the demon lists. Send me everything you would like to hear or see. Because <laughs> I'll listen to you. Uh, and if you haven't already, please check out our Heresy Hammer Patreon uh, for as little as £3 a month. You get two extra uh, Tactica shows <clears throat> and access to our super secret Facebook group and access early access to... Um, events and all the other stuff we'll be putting up uh like our super secret uh, facebook group is also heavily populated by pornography bots now so <laughs> if you, if you want to get right. some uh, you're, doing, you're doing a good job about uh <laughs> kind of like who, who comes so, in if you right. want to pretend like you're talking to nerds about toys we're actually talking to a pretend lady about toys <laughs> then um <laughs> join the patreon I think John is exaggerating for comedic effects. We shall we shall have a purge. We have a, a daily purge of such things. Cool. Nice one. Thank you very well, much. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.